Hi guys, welcome back. Matt Barton here with Matt Chat episode 516. Happy New Year. Uh, in this uh, video, we'll be looking at the game Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader. Now this game is made by Alcat Games, the same company, uh, same outfit that made those uh, great Pathfinder games, including uh, Wrath of the Righteous, one of my favorites. Uh, but this is a very different animal, set in a very different kind of a unique, really, uh, setting called Warhammer 40k, or maybe there's another name for it, but it's kind of the steampunk sci-fi fantasy thing. It's really unique, really intriguing uh, universe, and of course, different rule set, very different gameplay mechanics than those uh, Pathfinder games. Uh, very crunchy stuff. There's a lot to get into. Uh, anyway, I had a really, really good time with this game. Wanted to bring out the video, uh, show, what, show you what it's all about. Uh, so without further ado, here is Rogue Trader. All right, folks, let's give this a go. Warhammer 40K. That's a lot of Ks, you know. <laughs> Rogue Trader. Uh, just, you know, I finished this game a couple days ago. I uh, had a good time with it. It's got some nitpicks. or I got, I've got i got some nitpicks I'll share with you. But overall, I think it's a really good game. There's definitely some bugs. Uh, some pretty nasty bugs that will crash you to the desktop. Uh, it's not the worst game of that sort I've played. Uh, but if you want to wait for a couple more patches to roll out, I, you know, that might be advisable. Uh, but as long as you save it often enough, as you tend to do anyway, if you have <laughs> ever played one of these games before, uh, I think you'll be all right. Let's go ahead and jump in here. Uh, I think I'll play the opening for a while, and I'll show you some of my later games I was playing uh, earlier so you can get a sense of how the game evolves. Because uh, what do we have here? <laughs> By sending game statistics and bug reports to us, you can help us learn more about the way you play. <laughs> sure. In other words, we didn't want to bother with beta testing, so we'll let you beta test. <laughs> Yay, thank you so much. Uh, it's not as bad as all that, though. Uh, again, some of the stuff I've read about this, I think they're kind of exaggerating a little bit. It's not that many bugs. But, but anyway, let's see what we got here. Well, I guess they're going to eventually release some uh, DLC, some different uh, different expansions, maybe. You know, another game I finished recently, the uh, Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous, has a. Shortly before this game came out, they had a new uh, DLC. It was part two of an earlier DLC they released. Uh, both of those are excellent, by the way. Uh, so if you <laughs> as you're waiting for more patches for this, uh, you might want to play those. Uh, let's see. Do I want to change any of this? You know, I play it on normal difficulty. That seemed about right. I didn't uh, feel like it was too easy or too hard, so I might just stick to that. You probably don't want to go to story mode <laughs> unless you're a complete wimp. <laughs> I mean, not the fun. It's okay to create a character or two, get in here, and uh, you know, later on you'll be able to re redo your character, pick different stats, you know, things of that sort. So it doesn't. Not, it's fairly forgiving in terms of that. I don't mind getting my butt kicked a few times, experimenting with some different strategies, coming back, kicking ass. I mean, that's kind of what role-playing is all about. So I would never recommend you play it on story mode. Now, that said, there's probably about 17 novels worth of text in this game. So I hope you like reading, because <laughs> there's quite a bit of reading. Thankfully, it's not uh, terribly written or anything, so... Uh, that might actually be a plus, you know, if you really like a good story. Uh, my main appeal of this game actually was the this Warhammer universe, uh, Warhammer 40k universe. Uh, never read any novels. Said I've read a lot of the uh, original Warhammer stuff. Gotrick and Felix, some of my favorite series of all time. I actually loved those. Uh, but I was totally unfamiliar with 40k, and so this was quite a good introduction to that. It's got me curious. You know, if any of you uh, guys are bigger fans than I am of 40k and you know some good novels might be a good you know intro to the to the lore you know do let me know uh, I don't like the straight lore books you know I want some story <laughs> so if you got recommendations let me go let me go let me know 
Alright, I did Hecata as my first run through. I like the fact that she's a soldier. Worked pretty well. Made her into kind of a sniper character and she got a hell of a lot of kills. Uh, so that was a lot of fun. You might want to go with her too. But I think just to kind of mix it up a little bit, I'll pick something different for my second, uh, or this I'll uh, play through today. You know, I've been kind of debating what to pick. Because uh, these games, like a lot of this sort a lot of, of games, it depends on the characters that you meet along the way. Uh, the characters that you can add to your party. Ideally, of course, you want a balance of characters. Uh, and there might be a particular character you really like playing with and you don't want uh, redundancy. Uh, the only other warrior that I can think of, at least there's a couple that you meet later, um, but one of the first ones you meet is kind of this tank warrior character, Abelard. So if you like him, you might want to avoid playing another warrior. Uh, but if you want to play as the tank yourself, which might be a pretty good idea, you might want to go with this. Again, I'm not familiar with this character. I've only played Hecate. I'm not even sure. It'll be. I'm, I'm curious to see how different it will be, uh, depending on what character I start with. Uh, we'll see. Death World. On Death Worlds, the plant species and sometimes even the environment itself take aggressive and destructive forms. Okay. It's like you get something called uh, Survival Instinct. Once per combat, when the wounds of a Death World character drop below 30%. So that's a, <laughs> a bad situation. Hopefully that won't happen too often, but if it does, it gets 20% maximum wounds as temporary wounds. So you get basically a little buffer keep you alive. I'll try to explain some of these uh, mechanics as we go along here. It's quite a bit different than 5e or even uh, 3.5 if you're playing with the, uh, you know, if you've been playing those Pathfinder games. Uh, so quite a bit of different stuff. Obviously it has to be um, if you have a world with guns. <laughs> that changes everything. <laughs> a world with education. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? Death World characters also get 20% bonus to dies in armor while they have at least one temporary wound from any source. I think the... You know, I'm still... Even though I've played this game all the way through, I'm still trying to, still kind of struggling with this... What they mean by temporary wounds, because there's also injuries and traumas. But I think this just means additional wounds... Uh, when a character suffers damage, temporary wounds are deducted first. So I think this... My understanding at this point is that wounds are basically hit points. And then you have these traumas, which are kind of like injuries in other games. Well, let's see. The rest of this stuff we can look at later. Commissar. Ah, Commissar. Sounds very vaguely Soviet, doesn't it? Uh, Commissar's next single shot or single target melee attack applies the following effects. Target becomes marked. The ally who kills the marked enemy gains an additional turn after the current. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, okay, that's a, that's a pretty good ability, looks like. Okay, so we can only use this once per combat. Alright, sounds like a pretty good ability, though. And of course, what else do we have? Illustrious Glory, a little extra coercion. The FEL there, by the way, means fellowships, one of the uh, stats. Awareness is one of these skills. I see you have stats and skills. We'll talk more about those later. Oh, this is actually a negative. Uh, so he's got some awareness because of nightmares and tortured soul. So he'd be a little bit less aware, but it's only negative five. It's a half a step. Okay, let's get the portrait. You know, I've never quite understood this business with the portrait. <laughs> why don't they just get a 3D... Why don't they just use the 3D model to make the portrait? I I don't get it. Hopefully that... In a future game, maybe they'll just use AI if worst <laughs> comes to worst to make you a decent looking portrait that way. I don't think we can... I guess we can generate a different name for our ship. But I don't think I've got any extra options here. You know, I think the space combat is, is relatively weak part of this game. You know, all these Alcat games, I always like to have those, what do you call them, sub-games? Or almost mini-games, you know, like the Kingdom Management or something. Uh, so the, for this game, their version, or the version of that for this game is ship combat. 
again, it's kind of a it's a good idea. It's okay. You can have some fun with it, but I just found it to be kind of slow and cumbersome. You know, I'd almost rather they just not even have it in the game. It takes so long. It doesn't really add too much value. God, I feel the same way about the kingdoms <laughs> management. <laughs> you know, I used to just turn it off uh, when I'm playing those uh, Pathfinder games. But, you know, your experience may vary. I really hope that at some point they'll do a patch and speed up that damn ship combat. Because the rest of the game moves at a good clip, you know, especially if you speed up the animations. But that's just a chore. All right, bar her door. I don't think I can actually change anything except for the name here, so let's just continue on. Well, I guess as long as we got these, this up here, I could go through some of this. Uh, so the weapon skill is your melee stuff. Uh, ballistic skill is for your guns. And you see, it's kind of interesting that these are stats. Uh, so you have to kind of... I, th I think... Let's just take a quick look here. Yeah, so this... If you level up weapon skill or ballistic skill, it basically makes your hit roll better. So you're more likely to hit. It's really complicated the way they've done all this. It increases parry and reduces image. Oh, so this kind of has a double whammy. So it makes us parry better. And also makes them... Makes you able to get past their parries and dodge. And so we definitely want a good weapon skill if we're going to have a front line. A melee fighter. And then strength, uh, that's your damage, yeah. And then there's a skill associated with it. Athletics. Uh, these skills are more important than you might think. You know, uh, there's lots of uh, spots you won't be able to get to. Uh, if you don't have good athletics, you'll take some damage when you try to cross a, a cliff or something or climb something. Uh, and only one of the characters needs it in the party. Uh, so that's something else to think about. You know, you instead of making a bunch of jacks of all trades, you want to have one character maybe that's really good with lore, warp, uh, another character good at Imperium, and so on and so forth. Uh, but all these skills will come into play at some point. Uh, I think actually corrals. Is <laughs> you could probably get through the game without much bother with corrals and coercion. And uh, I think persuasion actually comes in handy at a couple of spots. Tech use is vital. Logic is pretty important. Demolition is uh, pretty important, especially if you don't want to do a lot of save scumming, uh, which is a big factor with this game. But you know, I don't know about you, but I'm not, I'm not going to just keep a save going if I'm not able to get through an area with some good loot just because my demolition roll failed. <laughs> and you can only do demolition so much in the game because they cap you with these things called melted charges. And so it's, again, if you don't want to do save scumming, it might be something to think about, but we'll have other characters to cover that. I think on the main, I'd probably want Persuasion and maybe... Uh, Maybe coercion, we'll see. Uh, but this character, you know, like most of these games, your main character will be doing a lot of the talking. And sometimes your other party members won't be there, so it'll just be you. Uh, so it's kind of nice to have some of those uh, social skills leveled up a little bit. So you won't just all <laughs> either lo uh, lose the rolls or have to keep save scumming. They do an extraordinary right. amount of save scumming to get through the game. Um... You might not care so much, you know, you miss out on some loot, miss out on some lore. Uh, but I like to see everything. Uh, for this, I'll just play through. We won't do any saves coming. Okay. There's a lot of stuff in this game that's... A lot of situations where you get the wrong role, you might lose a character permanently. No, so are you going to keep that? You know, after you spend all that time developing and growing attached to that character? Or are you just going to simply reload <laughs> and let it roll a couple times and see if you can get the, uh, a better roll? <laughs> An excellent place for contemplation. One has the best view of the cathedral from here. Mesmerizing, wouldn't you say? An impeccable manifestation. Of the God Emperor Sublimity. Well, you can see pretty good voice acting. There's not a whole lot of voice acting, but it's enough. Yeah, choices and dialogues. <laughs> They're big on that. <laughs> it's also kind of cool that you can roll over the. You know, I um, you can roll over some key terms and get a little more explanation. Uh, it would take a long time to explain all this lore. 
uh, the scenario. I think they kind of assume you're already familiar with uh, Warhammer 40k. You can pick it up as you go along, of course, but to me, it reminds me a lot of Dune. Not with the sandworms and all that, but just kind of the hierarchies and the families and the houses and everything. Uh, it reminds me a lot of that. But it's it's not an exact copy, obviously. And I think it's actually a really interesting universe. And you get lots of dialogue options. You know, one of the things I don't like about the game, at least on my playthrough, was it's kind of hard to be anything but a complete jerk. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they, they're really big on there's no good guys and bad guys. Every character's got these flaws. Uh, there's no real hero. You know, I personally don't like that so much. I like to have uh, at least a few likable characters. You know, give me an Emowin. <laughs> give me a Minsk, you know, somebody that I can just like. Uh, but uh, you might like this. You know, I guess it is more realistic. So let's see, what do we want to say? Have we met? I'll try to avoid any spoilers as well. Mm -hmm. That is the purpose of all temples to the God Emperor. To inspire awe and reverence. For it is the duty of his servants to persevere in their tireless service <laughs> until they are presented with the chance to give their very life for the master of humanity. <sighs> Some really good voice acting on this character. <laughs> Allow me to introduce myself. Kunrad Voitfeer, Master mm, of Whispers, in the employ of her ladyship rogue trader Theodora von Valencius, at your yes. service. I haven't had the pleasure of speaking with you in person before. So we're going to be the rogue trader, and I don't understand this title. You know, I guess it's like kind of a high-ranking lieutenant or something. <laughs> it doesn't sound very impressive. Rogue trader, you know, I think kind of a like a minor role in a uh, you know, some kind of subversive guild or something. Uh, but in this universe, it's a big, big deal of being a rogue trader. It's, it's kind of royalty, basically. Okay. My regards, Commissar. Finding you is a difficult it's prestigious. task, given your parents' fate and your upbringing in the Scola Progenium. Truly, our meeting is an act of providence. Is it not? I guess it's kind of like a high admiral kind of a role. I will be frank with Head you. of a merchant marine. You may forget your past titles, no matter who gave them to you, okay. or what their origins are. From the moment you and the other candidate were brought aboard this void ship, your fate changed. You now serve Lord Captain Theodora von Valencius and carry the burden of an heir of this house. Henceforth, you share your dynastic name with her ladyship. Bear it with honor. So, as I said, there's quite a bit of text, quite a bit of exposition and narration. It's not a game for somebody that just wants to rapidly click through dialogue. If you want to have any sense of what's going on. But again, I'll assume uh, that you can read all this on your own time. I'm just going to try to show you what the game is like. Say I'm one of Rogue Traders there, so here's another candidate. Okay. But of course, I have come to invite you to a meeting with Lady Theodora. I imagine you have many questions for your patroness, and I'm sure she has just as many questions for you. It is regrettable that you haven't yet had an opportunity to speak. It has been an arduous voyage thus far. You know, in creative writing classes, they always talk about show, don't tell. You know, same thing in film. You know, you wouldn't want to just have characters just standing here all this time. You're not really seeing anything. You're just reading or hearing text. The you know, it would be nicer if they had the budget, I guess, for some cutscenes or just something more cinematic than just platform. reading, but it is what it is. Okay, I think we're... Set. Go away! I didn't need your tutorials! Here's our journal. We just hit J to see this. You know, rumors. I don't, probably don't have any of those things yet. Follow Kunrad. It's about time. And if you play those Pathfinder games or Baldur's Gate or anything, it's fairly obvious how to scoot around and such. I think, yeah, we just have to use the... It is a little bit cumbersome. 
uh, trying to get the camera angles right sometimes. You know, especially, you know, one of the things this engine's horrible at is if you've got multiple levels going on, uh, it's really hard to get a good angle. And even some of these, uh, I guess you can call them cutscenes, even though it's in-engine, uh, sometimes it's so badly done that, you know, you've got something going on and you can't even see it because they chose the wrong camera angle. Uh, so you're just looking at a blank wall or a wall and you, you can still read the text and such. None but, shall stand in my way. You know, it could have been better, that aspect of it. Okay, then you can hit tab to highlight everything. It's worth clicking on. You can see the little textual descriptions of things because uh, <laughs> I guess you can't just see the table there, right? You need a little description. Yeah, it's just a massive conference table. Oh, thank you for that insight. Uh, we can click on these cogitators. You know, the, the, one of the cool things is the, uh, the with technology in this game, there's like a religious... It's almost like uh, monks and nuns. <laughs> it's like this spiritual component to all the technology and computers and such. There's a religion around it. Uh, so that's really cool. I had a good time with that. Uh, yeah, I guess there's probably all sorts of little foreshadowing and clues built into this. Let's just get into here. And I guess we could take a look at our inventory. Uh, looks like we've got a pistol, a solid projectile. So we'll get into all that uh, when we get to the leveling process. Is there anything else worth looking at in here? A copy of the 2348th volume of the Lex Imperials. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of bureaucracy. Follow my lead. I'll do a save. Yeah, I like the look of One my character. Of the Fon Valencia's trophy rooms. Perhaps you would like to take a look around after your audience with the Lord Captain. Man, I forgot about that tank. It gets you all excited about the tank, but you never actually get to pilot one. At least no, I didn't see that on my playthrough. What's happening? Right row! Yeah, these servitors are basically cyborgs. People that have been sort of made into these uh, servants. Robotic or cyborg servants. There's a lot of wicked stuff in this game. It's not... <laughs> We're not big on human rights. Have been ambushed. Okay, been ambushed. So that means we can't position our character, basically. And here over here we have our turn order. Like other uh, role-playing games, it's initiative. Really important to try to get that up because a lot of times if you can move first, you might actually be able to kill all the enemies before they even get a turn. Okay, yeah, we'll try to explain this as we go along. But one of the big challenges is trying to figure out this the movement and the combat or attacks. So you get, I think by default, one attack per round. And if you attack first, then you can't move. attack, but not attack and move. There's there's some ways around that, some skills and stuff you can pick up, some items, but that's going to be the thing. So we, like in an XCOM game, you can go for cover, and there should be a little shield that pops up if there's, there's cover. So like right there, I could get some cover. But these are melee guys anyway. I think I'll just... Scoot in closer. Yeah, and if that's pretty neat. So if you click on these spots, you can see the line of sight. That's what that little orange line is indicating, that I can see the baddie. Shoot him with my pistol. Just go ahead and get close. And then you can either click there. I said don't show it! <laughs> it's trying to be helpful, damn it. Uh, I think I just have this one, one attack at the moment. I could do my... Oh, it was. Yeah, I forgot I'm playing on a different character, so this guy has at all costs. So my next single shot uh, has some effects. Enemy target becomes marked. Allied target. Eh, why not just use it? We only use it once per combat. It's probably be pretty brief. Ah, man, it is just determined, isn't it? 
uh, so I can right click on this guy and get some, see his stats. See, no armor, no dodge. 30 hit points or wounds. Some other stuff. Let's go ahead and just pop him with my pistol. You can see the 75% chance to hit him. It's going to do 10 to 14 points of damage. And I think that little two is exploits. That's a different class that gets those. Basically does a little bonus damage. <laughs> okay. And that's it for this round. So I just hit space bar. And they should take him out. I might get one more turn. Man, he's killing them though. I hope I take him out. He might kill me. We might have to start over. Yeah, I should run away. Yeah, there we go. Looks like I'm going to kill him. 75% chance to kill or hit, I guess, and then they'll probably kill if I hit him. So. Oh, I missed! So since I move, since I attack first, now I can't move. So I'm just stuck there. Oh, oh good thing he didn't attack me, huh? Now, this will be interesting, because I... Now, since I have a pistol, I can't shoot him at... Good God, I said no! <laughs> you see, already a glitch. I say no tutorial, no tutorial, no tutorial, no tutorial, and it's still giving me the tutorial. Okay. Now, since it's a pistol, I can shoot him at point blank range. If I had a two handed weapon, uh, foolishly enough, it would make me move away to use it, and then they'd get an attack of opportunity on me. Uh, so there's that, but since it's a pistol, I could just pop him. Boom, and he's dead. And that's the game. <laughs> nah. <laughs> what suspiciously poor timing for such an accident. Mm. Servitors malfunction on the officer's deck at exactly the same <clears throat> moment when the rogue trader and their heirs are gathered here. I have blocked all passages between the upper and lower sectors of the residential decks. If this is a deliberate attack, it should stop the culprits from advancing their plan. Nah. See, instead of showing you things, it just tells you, without taking his eyes off the bodies on the floor, he removes the Vox caster from his belt. So I'll quit hammering on that. You know, obviously they didn't have an infinite budget to make cutscenes out of everything, but I'm actually okay with it like this. I don't mind reading a little description. It just sometimes gets annoying when you I want action and instead you're reading. For Lady Theodora's safety, I have to oversee the execution of these orders personally. I hope you will have no difficulty reaching the observation platform on your own. <laughs> it is just at the end of this corridor. Let's see, is he gonna bow? Oh, they could have made him bow, come on. I'm pretty sure, I think they used Unity to make this. Which that might explain a lot of the bugs. <laughs> okay. Claim to the stars. Ooh, look at this. A black shard resembling obsidian. Now, I wish I could get inside this damn tank, man. Isn't that a big part of Warhammer? Get to ride around in those tanks and be a total badass. A new challenge for me? I don't know this stuff. Yeah. I mean, I love the graphics here. The art style's really good all the way through the game. Now, if we hit M and get the map, and it usually will show you if there's loot. One of the things I like about the game is it makes it pretty clear where the loot is, and you don't have to pick up everything. When you leave the area, you can just in one click just pick up all the stuff that was lying on the lying on the ground. So I do like that. Most of the stuff you find will be lateral upgrades. It's one of the things you're going to really struggle with in this game is trying to figure out is this. Is this weapon? Is this, is this better? Is this armor better? <laughs> I don't know. It's any kind of sideways, you know, it's not really clear what's going to be better. You know, just because something might do more damage is not going to make necessarily make it better because there's all these other factors to consider. We'll get more into that in battles. We're already we've already lost the voice acting. That's okay. Simply irrationally, Theodora. So basically, she's trying to pick an heiress. <laughs> she looks pretty cool. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, and I think there's a couple of different contenders for that role. Now, I'll let you guess what's going to happen here. Who's going to end up being the role? Let's just go ahead. We can listen or speak. Yeah, let's just speak. Why not? What is this? Do you permit your people to interrupt your conversations? So remember, this is a very aristocratic society. We're not at the bottom of the social pecking order, I guess. But we're not at the top either. Theodora is. I guess just shy of uh, the emperor. So we probably want to be as respectful as possible if you want to get into the... <laughs> You want to get into that. <clears throat> yeah, and here's the... In the dialogue, you can see how these uh, various social or lore-based roles are going to kick in. So some of these, it says succeeded, meaning I'm going to automatically get it. Let's see what's the situation here. I guess they're trying to figure out this... Uh, what would you do with this poison treasure? Oh, so she's trying to figure out if we're going to be a good uh, heir to the, to the rogue trader throne. A uh, new world on the fringes. High seismic activity. The world is populated by natives who worship some heretical underworld spirits. But attempts to install ore extractors have failed. Uh, mining crews are disappearing. My question is, what would you do? So, Lord Xenos. Xenos is the aliens. Any non-human, basically. So, uh, you can bone up on that. Research all these other species. And I guess we've got some... A little bit of bonus there. So, we could... Uh, rely on our insights from that research or education to make you know, a response. And same thing with uh, Warp. Uh, warp is one of the more interesting aspects of the universe. Uh, kind of like in Star Trek, you know, Warp 2, Warp 3, you go to these different uh, locales uh, along these channels. Uh, but when you're traveling amongst systems, uh, it's not just empty space. You have to go through this weird sort of Lovecraftian <laughs> uh dimension i guess kind of dimensional travel and all sorts of weird stuff happens when you go through uh, uh these warp zones you know i think that's pretty pretty badass actually i like that <laughs> uh let's see what else we can do here i think the little lines codes for traversing the minefields yeah i guess we uh trade some things to make that response or you lose a little something Why don't we go with our lore on the Xenos? Those spirits could well be the native's name for dangerous aliens. She arches an eyebrow. Reasonable and prudent. However, chasing after ethereal creatures may prove a rather long and fruitless endeavor. Apart from Xenos, an untrodden planet might be teeming with myriad horrors. Oh, that word, myriad. I suspect that you, Bahrador, are simply unaware of their... Does it become any one of our status to engage in petty feuds? I find your tone most disagreeable, Edelfred. <laughs> uh, what do you want to do? I don't be a jerk. Shut your mouth, Edelfred, before I decide to shut it for you. You feel the temperature in the room drop. <laughs> I invite you to try, you miserable vermin. Edelfred. I believe I gave you an assignment on this ship. So she's going to get rid of him. I beg your forgiveness. Your presence has such a profound effect on me that I well forgot the time. Kisses. Get out of here. You know, they, it seems like they want you to be as a big of a jerk and as haughty and aristocratic as possible. So maybe I'll just go with it for this time. You know, my first game, uh, I tried to be iconoclastic, which is basically it's nice and fair. <laughs> Uh, maybe we'll just go with the, the uh, full evil dictator-like mode this time. Why are you here? I don't know. I hope you will clarify that. Yeah. Clarity, a luxury that few of us can afford. Now, there is a reason why I do not explain all the details of the question I posed to you earlier. Beyond the orders of the Imperium Empire, seldom is one granted an opportunity to enjoy information abundance. Oh, be more concise, lady. My name is Theodore von Valencius Massimo Scaris. I'm a rogue trader in the service of Warrant of trade. Catch aboard this very vessel. 
Find us the honor to venture into the darkness beyond the Empire and carry humanity's light where powers wicked and heretical reign and bow death and ruin to us all. So we're basically out to colonize, exploit, explore, expand the Empire, fight the Xenos, all the fun stuff. I'm ready to take on this sacred purpose. Yeah, so she's, uh, let's see. Uh, right, so we've got some Valencius blood on our veins. Again, kind of royalty. Uh, so we can take this mantle on. We could be one of her heirs. One of? Does this mean there are other heirs? Yes. I'm ready. Oh, yes, you would. You came aboard hours before the warp jump and have not yet distinguished yourself in any way. Blood right alone is not enough to earn the high honor of becoming the bearer of a warrant of trade. Uh, alas, even those responsibilities can at times be too challenging. Conrad Voigtveer served me for many years before he made his mistake. Master of Whispers, Spy Master. All right, what else do we need to do? Pass some time before the navigator. Really Which cool are... beings. Oh my god. Yeah, they help you fly through the warp. Uh, but they're also really badass in combat. Okay. Navigator, translation, an incident took place. Is that so? The ship is possessed. That's another cool thing. There's so many cool things about this universe, but the, the ship we're on really ancient you know so even though it looks high-tech and technological you know, a lot of this stuff is hundreds if not thousands of years old uh, so this kind of this weird mix of like uh, old and new you know, have, you ever, have you read that book I recommended a while back Chronicles of Chronicles of Leibowitz you uh, I wonder if they took some inspiration uh, from that book if you, if you haven't read that by the way you should definitely read it really great stuff uh, I can never remember the name of the author, uh, but just look for, I think it's actually the Canticle of Leibowitz. Uh, you'll thank me for recommending that if you uh, scope it out. Okay, what else? Now here's Abelard. He's going to be our, what would have been our tank if we didn't decide to be a tank ourselves. But he's kind of the seneschal, or well, I guess that's like your CEO, your executive officer, maybe. Uh, snuff hidden nooks. Function cogitators. Uh, I have no more questions. Disturbances reported on the adjacent decks. Check the new blood. So a lot of times when you're warping uh, between systems, you'll have uh, weird stuff appears on the ship. You get attacked. And there's all this business with her heretics, people that are worshiping the Xenos or these cults. There's all sorts of fun stuff that happens as we go from system to system. I your cries of mercy. Cross them. Okay. I guess these tutorials all come in groups. Now, so far, we just got ambushed, so we don't get to set up our characters, but... Uh, one of the fun things about this game, very XCOM-like, is you can really do a lot of thought about how you want to be positioned, and then you have these zones you can lay out. Like, special places for your snipers to hide, and... There's a lot of thought that went into this. So for this battle, we might actually want to take cover. And the full shield there means we have full cover, at least from that side. Uh, that's half cover there. Uh, so we don't really have a melee weapon yet, so let's just... Uh... You know, this looks like a pretty good spot, actually. And go ahead and use our at all costs again. It's not going to be able to one-shot this uh, heretic cutthroat. Not a problem. Me was your biggest mistake. Yes. That's all we can do. So the moving and the and the combat gets a little more complicated if you get dual wielding. You, then you might have a, two pistols or two weapons. You might have a melee and a pistol. So you have to put a lot of thought into how you want to move around. A temporary positive effect from an ally. Uh, kill them. 50 plus ballistic skill until the end of combat. Source Theodora. Duration permanent. Alright. 
So if you played any RPG, you know, it's usually better to, if you can kill something, to kill it. Because if it's got one hit point left, it can still do full damage to you. Just go ahead and take Nothing this guy out. Oh, we missed! What is my... Ballistic skill is really high. Uh, we can look at the roll if you like. Let's do that. So it's very descriptive. Now, unfortunately, there are lots of bugs and glitches, even in these uh, uh, pages like this, so you can't necessarily trust this 100%. But it gives you some idea. Uh, that's actually just the weapon. Let me see if I can find the... Somewhere here, there's the roll. Uh, am I missing it? Yeah, I don't see the roll there. Just the weapon. Usually it would tell you... Maybe I have to get a little further in the game to see that, but it'll, it'll spell out exactly all the math that went into the, the hit or the miss. Now, this business will momentum is probably worth. There'll probably be a tutorial about that here eventually, but basically as you kill stuff and as the battle progresses, you build up this momentum. It's based on a stat called Resolve. That's uh, indirect. To the heretics. Uh, you know, you build up, build it up as you go along. Oh, what's going on here? Crash to the desktop like getting... already? <laughs> but, you know, if you played, uh, say, Final Fantasy VII, you know, they have those limit breaks and all that business. It's, it's kind of similar to that. You're basically, super abilities you can use, usually, generally only once per combat, once you build up enough of that uh, momentum. Didn't bat an eye when that scum burst into the deck. Well, maybe I did. I think the Vox is just your communication device. What is happening? What are your orders? Mort has gone on ahead. Yes, unfortunately, it's not that Mort. Oh, he's gone on ahead. If you want to make yourself useful, go after him. Okay. It's like there's nothing to loot here yet. What does it want us to do? It's about time. Go after him. I think that's the wrong way. You know, I don't know what it is about Owlcat not having a damn mini-map. I would love a mini-map! Where's my mini-map? Oh, these guys are fighting. I think we, uh... Let's see. Looks like we have to go this way. Victory awaits. What's that? But, you know, I like the way they, st they started this off. It's I like a game that gets you into combat early. doesn't make you wait through lots and lots of exposition about people you don't have any reason to care about yet. You know, just get to the action. For God's sake. This game does a good job. You can always think about Halo, the first Halo. I mean, right off the bat, it's a good game. Always on time, eh, Conrad? Mort, pull yourself together. Arch militant. When we get to the leveling, I'll talk a little bit more about some of these uh, class options. Master whispers, what is happening on my ship? The Vox Nut is silent, the Vox Master is not responding. Is this a severe case of warp madness? I have not yet received word from the Engineerium regarding any Geller field failures. <clears throat> Mutiny! Traitors, execute one of them. Let's see. I don't know. I guess it doesn't really matter what we pick. First, we have to confirm that the bridge and the sanctum are secure. Metal Thread, where is he? Uh, so he's a psyker, and those guys, awesome. I don't think our guy has psychic abilities. I tried to locate him, but the last thing known is... Blast it! Uh, Transitional Deck 18 is at the heart of the disturbance for goals to bring him back to use some support. Okay, discover the... That's right away... Okay, uh, this elevator leads to restricted compartments. Do not let me down. I require you both to understand. 
Bring, find out old Thrad and bring him here in whatever state you find him. I hear and obey. Move out. I guess it'd be kind of good for us if we did die, because that way we would be the the air. Okay, there we go. Probably pick up a teammate here, I assume. Are you ready to head to 18? You do not have the proper gear. <laughs> I have a proposition. Since I am the more important person here, you can go in the front to shield me from potential threats. <laughs> It better not fail me. The Lord Captain made it clear that relying on you is fraught with risk. I see you have quickly earned Lady Theodora's trust. With a pop and a sharp crackle, something hits you in the abdomen. Uh-oh. And you are consumed by unbearable gut-wrenching pain. Ooh. Yeah, I hope you didn't get too attached to old Conrad. Game over. <laughs> so if the character falls unconscious, they receive a trauma. That's what always confuses me. I think that when they talk about temporary wounds, I get that confused with these traumas. So basically, if one of your characters goes down in combat, they're not dead, per se, but they might have this big penalty. Careful, careful. Be gentle with our guest. He has an important mission to complete during our visit to the Warren Chamber. And for that, I need him breathing. What do you do, oh, face? Back with us, I see. Delightful. How perceptive of <laughs> you. I'll help you with the next insight. I need you here for your blood. You have the option to share it voluntarily, or I will squeeze it out of you myself. I love this, this character. We are in the good empty room of the war in chamber. This void ship's most hallowed vault. One thing this there, game does have is good villains. Beyond those gates lies the relic that gives Theodora all of her power. The sacred warrant of trade. Only one obstacle remains to obtaining it. The gates of the chamber are guarded by the sentinel. An ancient device that will only <sighs> open the door to a true heir of the dynasty. Now, what would happen if we tried to join myself, with him? But never mind. You will yeah, just for curiosity. Let's see what. Let's see if he would let us join him. Probably no. Hmm. I may consider it once you have done what I need you to do. Okay. Well, how do we get out of this? Uh, On the contrary, the wolf's blessing has raised me too much above your kind, Fawn Valencius. The Sentinel refused to submit to me. But you can help. After all, isn't that what family is for? Uh, let's see, you got coercion roll successful. What sorry pathetic excuse do you even have for your apostasy? That's a word you don't see every day. <laughs> you sorted wretched piece of rocks. Beep. Wretched. What do you know about wretchedness? Theodorus Kerr. Are you hoping to buy a grain of her indulgence with your blind loyalty? Oh, I know this delusion. But thank the gods it no longer has power over me. Humanity can rot. I no longer serve mortal kind. So maybe he's about as close to just a pure villain <laughs> as you're going to get. I mean... Uh, Death to Humanity is probably a bad guy, even in this universe. Once my work is done, I'll make that pompous But it's not as though Von Valencius is, Valencius uh, watch as I sacrifice her all entire good. dynasty and commit their fate to the go- Alright, alright. Uh, fight the voice in your head. Get out, I am not your puppet! Let's try that. Probably won't be successful. Yeah, so you can see what I mean, right, about how- some of this is rather Dune-like, Frank Herbert style. Maybe a little bit darker than Dune, even. And this is going to use our tech use. This would be a really, would have been a good cutscene, I think, where he puts his hand in this machine. So I think it basically takes a blood sample. It's all the psychological or telepathic stuff going on, too. 
<clears throat> few dark drops. You know, now that I've played the game all the way through, I'm seeing all this foreshadowing and stuff that they put here at the beginning. It's really cool. It's really well thought out, this story, I have to say. The subject is in a state of heightened stress. Do you require assistance? Why, yes. Pain shoots through your head, subsides just as quickly. Request accepted. Initiating defense protocol. So this cogitator had enough intelligence to think, well, maybe something's, uh, maybe I'm being coerced here. <laughs> oh, check that out. Well, there is still another way. Okay. Ha -ha. I still don't see any loot. I guess you need to run in here. I'll lay claim to the stars. Whoa. Whoa, look at that. Yeah, that's a great great uh, art. Oh, this is the warrant of trade. So they take their bureaucracy really seriously. <laughs> There's ribbons everywhere. Why would you put a wax seal on a ribbon just on a wall? I don't know. But they seem to be very fond of that. I guess it's their version of post-it notes. Escort the child of the house to safety. I need a weapon. Distance from the current location to the nearest arsenal. Initiating situational calculations. Temporary obnubilation following acute stress. Leave me Mobile, away. middle and upper decks. Assuming the probability of safe placement in areas of concentration of armed units. So they want us to die because we are of the royal line. Yeah, so here's the old injury. So if you get an injury in combat, maybe you get hit really hard or you fall unconscious, you get this. See, and you can what it does. You get a stack of 20. I don't think just one really has any effect, I guess. Maybe if you build up enough of those. Yeah, too many reduce characters' resolve and cause a trauma. Which the trauma might make us, uh, might ruin our hit chance. Weaken us. Seal the warrant chamber. Here's Avalar. What? Well, whatever are you doing in the warrant chamber? How did you... I really like uh, Avalar, but again, since I'm going to be the tank this time, I probably don't want him in my regular party. Watch! Oh, holy sakes, blood! Just skip through this. It is small wonder that the heretics are so well organized. I thought his order to seal the passage... Mm. You're in a bad way. I treat your wounds. I can treat your wounds. I have a Medicaid. Yeah, I forgot about that. He's got Medicaid. It's kind of like Medicare, but Medicaid doesn't have the R in it. <laughs> uh, so let's see. Yeah, now he's in our party. Sometimes you consult the appropriate treaties on Tactica Imperial. We just do this. I stand there we go. Probably the only time in the game that'll actually work, but I was able to help me. Now I got some stuff. We can start talking about some of these things. Okay, let's put, give our guy, we'll give him a pistol and this axe. Now he's dual wielding. Now I think the only real penalty to dual wielding that I was able to, to find anything, well, I guess we could check it out here. For once, can we that actually... Is a noticeable improvement. Oh, come on. The lower decks are teeming with heretics instigating the battle to revolt. But that is the least of our problems. The ship's enforcers are rounding up the scoundrels and... But that is not the worst of it. All these jolts and shaking are most alarming. These are signs that the navigator and the master helmsman are having difficulty translating the ship out of the warp and into a cut. Be quiet, let's go! The Lord has crewed to battle, which means 
Oh no, I didn't. I wasn't even finished putting my armor and stuff on. Oh, that sucks. That's that's really crappy. You know, it didn't even give me a chance when I just uh, closed the window. It went into this mode. Okay, well we'll try to make the best of it. Oh, that's a pretty good battle here too. But anyway, at least uh, we're not ambushed, so we can move our characters around. And eh, just move him. I guess you could put them kind of close together, actually. Okay, now we've got both. So this is what I was telling you. If we shoot first, uh, you won't be able to move. If you move first and the, do the melee attack, we have to be up close to them. But if they're... Well, let me just... It'd be easier just to show you. Okay, we got a charge. Charge is a nice way to get a little free attack. Doesn't count towards your attacks per turn. But you have to have a little room. Eh, why don't we go ahead and do that? I'm gonna try... And we kill this guy. Let's see what he does. Okay, since we killed him... I can't move, but I can use my pistol. Here's another guy that we can take out. Let me try for one of these. Okay. Alright. Oh, well, gave him a injury, looks like. Now we can do the same for Abelar, get that free attack in, and then he's got uh, a sword, which gives him this cleave. Uh, basically a little area attack, but it's not going to really help here. He's also got this ability, Brace for Impact, uh, for one round. That's what I don't like about this, uh, these uh, origin, I think they call them origin powers. It's just one round, you know? But anyway, for one round, uh, the Navy officer and their allies in a three-cell radius gain deflection for each archetype taken by the Navy officer. I will do my duty. So we're within three uh, cells. So that will probably be pretty good. But it must take care of this one. Yeah, and I think that's all we can do. It's space bar. Ah. Deflection. Again, it's kind of complicated. All these different stats and. Dodging means you completely dodge the attack, you take no damage. Uh, but you can only get that up so high, and I think there's always going to be a chance you get hit. So then you've got armor, which is, since it didn't let me put my armor on, I don't have any. Uh, but that reduces the damage by percentage, you know, say 20%, 30%, whatever. Uh, and then deflection is kind of like this fudge mechanic that's added on to the end. So if you have a deflection of 1, uh, and you take, let's say, five points or ten points of damage. If you had deflection one, that goes down to nine. So it's probably most useful when you're dealing with smaller attacks. You know, if you're getting hit for 50 points of damage, you know, it's not going to be that great. <laughs> uh, but for small amounts of damage, you know, maybe it could keep you in the fight longer. Okay, I don't want to charge because they'll get all these attacks of opportunity. Uh, but I think I've got... Yeah, I got this. So if I hit my... Swing. I think I might actually be able to take out all three of these guys. Let's try. Let's see what happens. Oh, oh no, they both parried. Uh, so parry works in melee, obviously only. Uh, it's basically what you want instead of dodge if you're a tank character. Well, let's see. I think that's about all I can do here. I only get my one attack per turn. Let's just go to Abelard now. Uh, I think that's probably the best move. Try to take this guy out. Target. Then I can... Oh, I'm a little too close to do my charge. And I might have been able to move a little bit and do the charge if I'd have been thinking about it. But, oh, well. These early battles should be too tough for you. Now again, I can only do this since I got a pistol. If I had a two-handed weapon, no, I wouldn't be able to uh, attack point-blank range like this. This must map like a little automatic fire pistol burst. So you could you could evaluate. So that'll do maybe it's very it's probably going to miss, and I'll only do about three points of damage, even if they hit. But this weapon gets uh, six shots. So even though it looks like it's only three points of damage, you know, six shots, you know, you might be able to hit. But I might be better off with my good old swing, see? 
Well, there we go. They didn't parry that time. My other game, I have a. Uh, I have it set up such that whenever you parry with my tank, it gets a free counter attack on him. And that's really nice. You can take out a lot of enemies that way. I think that's all we got. Oh, yeah, there's your party formation. Okay, before we do anything else, let's get this armor put on. Uh, so, flat chest plate, it's a medium piece of armor. You know, I looked at some of the guides uh, that you can find online. Some people don't like uh, medium armor. They like, think it's kind of crappy. Because, again, the best, you know, if you're going to be at range, it's probably better just to dodge everything. You don't take any damage. Uh, there is a skill we can get eventually, or a, a feat or a perk or whatever you want to call it, that will nullify this dodge penalty. So, let's see, for some, <laughs> I don't know why they shifted to decimals for dodge penalty. Uh, but you can see how that's... 0.75 is going to really hurt our dodge, which is right here. So we got a 65% dodge with nothing. If I put this on, that goes down to 48. So see, that's that penalty kicking in. Uh, but I do get 20% armor, which reduces incoming damage. So you know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Is it better? Is it worse? Who knows? And then we got a sword here. Uh, the sword ups our parry, and it gives a... Every time we hit somebody... They will lose some weapon skills, so they'll basically get worse at hitting you. <laughs> Sounds pretty good. So we could put that on. So the only thing with the axe is it's got bleeding, uh, which is the damage over time effect. There's ways to capitalize on that later uh, with some of the skills you can get. Uh, and then we could move from a solid uh, auto pistol to this uh, laser pistol. You know, you could specialize just in solid weapons. Which, as far as I can tell, is your kinetic weapon, slug, <laughs> or bullets, <laughs> versus uh, an energy weapon like this laser here. Uh, you can see the laser has a really nice dodge reduction, so there'll be I'll be hitting more. It only shoots twice, though, instead of six times, so that's a trade-off. Uh, but otherwise, it looks pretty good. Over-penetration, I think, is... Uh, let's see if we can get a description of that. Chance to cause overpenetration, the attack will damage creatures behind it. All right, so if you got a line of creatures, uh, you might be able to hit the first one and then whatever's behind it, and you know, maybe two or three down the road. That's a pretty powerful ability, but I like uh, being able to hit what I'm shooting at even more. <laughs> got another medical pack put on Abelard there. He's probably better off with his chain sword, chain weapons. Okay, so we got a sword. I think the sword is a primitive. Yeah, so we really can't get any good uh, perks on that. The chain, you can level up a little bit. You can specialize in chain weapons. Okay. Now let's go with the switch to the laser. I guess we could give him a... I like the hint for him to have a two-handed weapon, but let's go with this. Okay, now we can level up. Uh, so we, these guys are both warriors, uh, so we're not going to see a lot of diversity here. Uh, what's cool, though, about this system is you, you go all the way around the clock with warrior, and then you can specialize yeah, further as arch militant, and then everybody ends up as an exemplar uh, way later in the game. Uh, but it gives you a way to kind of vary up your party, get some good diversity in there. Okay. You'll be seeing this screen a lot. <laughs> it's confusing as hell. <laughs> Uh, you know, you can try your best to min-max this stuff. If, if you really study it hard, you can get some really good results. I don't know how far I even trust these recommendations sometimes. But your mileage may vary. Like, you see some of the glitches here? Like, it says, uh, awareness, negative five. Just a complete glitch. You, know, you, just, you can't trust this stuff at all. Uh, you just have to you click on it, I think it'll give you a little bit better results. But basically, these things aren't going to go down no matter what this interface tells you. Uh, you just want to decide basically what kind of mix of skills you want in your party. I think these are just based on our soldier rank. So we could go with Medicaid or Demolition. Uh, Demolition's good for getting past uh, doors and things that are locked. Maybe open up a chest. 
Usually that's tech use, but sometimes it's demolition. Coercion is only going to be useful in uh, dialogues. But since this guy's uh, going to be our main, you know, you might want to focus on that uh, for him. I think Growls is like poison resistance. It's a strange one. Now, I guess that's all we get for this first rank. So relatively easy. Uh, for him, you probably want to go athletics because there'll be a lot of spots where you need somebody with strong athletics. Okay, I think we're done there. I'll do a quick save. Check the map. We're good. Okay. Not a whole lot of options here for places to go. <laughs> da -da. Oh, now here's the character I really like. Adira. She is going to be our badass party member. And so, he will enter the halls of the blinded guide and witness the radiance of the final dawn through the cracks and fall victim to a whim of fate. Yeah, I don't know what the hell she's talking about most of the time, but she does amazing damage. Adira! Would it be too much to ask that you phrase your soothsayings plainly for once? Yeah, she's a psyker, which is basically is their uh, magic users. I'm not drunk, old man. I'm suffering. <laughs> sure. You have uh, psychers do psychic ability, and then the navigators <laughs> the have this third eye. The and they have special abilities just for them. What? You don't mean. Zed, oh. without a doubt. So we've lost our navigator, so the ship can't really go to warp without a navigator. So that'll be our first order of business. That's Edelthrat. Oh, Emperor's Providence. The other air lives as well. Not so fast, old man. If we drown in the warp, Lady Theodora's yeah. heirs won't be any good to us. If... Blast, Blast you're right. You're right. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Oh, Nothing is well... But we're not just going to stand here and nope. take it, are we? So one of the more interesting mechanics in this game is with these psychers. Uh, the more you use the, their magic or their psychic ability, the more problems you create. Not only as for the, the, the combat, but you get all sorts of weird stuff going on uh, if you overdo it. Or you could choose to live life dangerously, and you could uh, take skills that say... Um, You know, maybe you want the uh, warp uh, to go up, or the, I think they call it perils of the warp. <laughs> uh, so you can you can fix it up so that she actually gets more powerful the more disturbance there is in the force, so to speak. Okay, let's see. I don't think we need to do anything to her right away. She's got light armor on, which is probably good for her. Now they've got they've got better ways to protect themselves. Okay, do we need to go through the door? I want to get into combat with this Psyker so I can show you how awesome she is. You know, once you get Psykers and Navigators, they're going to do almost all your killing for you. Okay, so you can see here, I'm not in combat yet. So what I can do is slip up and do a, a first attack on them. Uh, so she's got this staff. Uh, the Navigators have a staff and the Psykers have a staff. They're different kinds of staves. <laughs> oh, it's got a lightning arc on it, and it's basically chain lightning. And on top of that, it gives you plus five willpower, which is their magic power. It's a power level six. So that does amazing damage right out the gate. And then she's got, I guess, what's her archetype? Operatives. Uh, so the operative, you can put these... Uh, exploits on people and I think it just gives you more damage right? yeah for every st they stack so for every exploit it does the attack from her does five plus perception bonus plus more damage so this is why with an op uh, with an operative you want to be thinking about maybe bumping up that perception along with their other abilities but to tell you the truth the psychic stuff is so much more powerful than anything else it's really all you need now one of the big drawbacks though is friendly fire you can easily kill your own people. So you want to make sure that this is not going to target a bunch of uh, 
your guys. But I think if we put it... Come on. Why is that not working? I go where the whispers lead. Uh, there we go. So we can open up with this. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> Two dead before the combat starts. That's what I'm talking about. Let's give her some cover and then... You don't want your melee guys. They don't really need to be behind cover. Uh, sometimes you, I guess depending on what you're up against. Let's just put them out front. Should probably be able to kill these guys over here too. Look at this. Look at this. Now before we do, we can slap an exploit on. So now he's got three stacks of this uh, exploit. And then she's got this uh, little buff she can put on you. The Psyker increases the target's dodge and parry by 10%. I think we can do that at any time, though. And then this, uh, yeah, Veil Degradation. That's what I was trying to remember. So if we keep doing the Psychic stuff, this uh, Veil Degradation goes up, and then weird stuff will start to happen. It depends on the ability that you're using. So if I... It says here the Staff is a major Psychic power, Veil Degradation increased by plus 3. I think it only goes up to like 12, <laughs> so pretty significant. Uh, or we have this minor power uh, that only brings it up by one, but this will be a quick battle. But this were a whole bunch of enemies you might want to think about, uh, not doing so much psychic stuff. I just, I love that, man. So we're kind of pushing this, it's already up to 15. I guess it goes up to 20. So let's just leave it there, but we could stick a buff on somebody there if we wanted to. <laughs> I'll live another day. Oh, did he hit me? Yeah, you can see this momentum building up. Somewhere we got resolve. Where does it have our resolve? Somewhere here it should say what our resolve is. I'm not sure. I haven't dug enough in here to find it, but... Uh, we can build up our momentum enough, and then we'll be able to do some special abilities. Might, might not have that yet. So what we can do with this guy, I think, is... Uh, I shall not fear. Let me just go ahead and activate Ready that. Done. Charge in. We'll get that free attack with this, and then we can hit him again with our... Sword! Boom, boom, boom! It's just that easy. Creature in the chair appears if it has become one with his throne. Well, this is the navigator. Yeah, so these are the ones that have the uh, third eye. Amazingly powerful once you get one of the party. One of my favorite characters is the navigator. I don't think this one's going to last, though. The servants are dead. Hey, are you alive? Your time is short. We have to get you out of that chair. <laughs> no, you don't. Uh, our time is sure to do what? Fall to your knees, mortals, and behold the final dawn. Uh-oh. It came from beyond. His body is not his. So there's kind of this H.P. Lovecraft Cthulhu-like thing going on. Each one a port of salvation within me. Run, flee from this place. I want to help you. I'm going to ask Abelard what to do. The ship can only begin the translation with the assistance of the Master Hellsman. We must get to the bridge. So I guess this we're going to leave this navigator to try to fight this force. Pick up some items. Hey, what's this? Scrappy auto gun. It's a two-hander. Okay, so I can show you that. Da -da. I'm trying to think if there's anything. Yeah, there's some more stuff over here. I usually just pick everything up and then try to sort it out later. A new challenge for me. Okay, I think that's about all we can do. So let's uh, got two of these scrappy auto guns. Uh, so rate of fire four, the recoil, you know, just like a real gun, I guess, or real automatic weapons. You know, it's it's harder to. You might get one good shot, but then as the thing starts. Jumping around, you'll be less accurate. And they, it's pretty precise math on that. I guess we could... Might tell us what it does. No, it's not... 
going to tell us there. But I know that the higher the recoil is, the more likely you are to miss with the sus uh, subsequent shots. And I think it goes up. So like by the fourth shot, you're definitely not going to hit anything. Uh, and it's a two-hander, so we won't be able to use this right at point-blank range. Another consideration. But we can put it in the, the second tier, or second set, and we could switch to it and switch back. And there's no penalty for that, uh, which is kind of nice. Uh, I really want a two-handed uh, melee weapon. Okay, I guess he's... I guess we might as well give him another backup weapon, too. Why not? And I think this is an exact replica. Yeah, so this is the same staff she's got already, so no real reason to equip that. Weapons don't uh, get damaged weakness. or degraded or anything like that, so that's not a, a concern. Locked door. Let's see, which way do we need to go? Oh, here we go. Officer's deck. I think it's fairly easy to tell you which way to go. Upper decks. Pretty good loading times, too. That would really suck if you had to wait forever for the thing to load. <laughs> you, especially when you get to those spots where you have to save scum. Mercifully, though, it's, it's uh, quick. You know, there's something to be said for that. You know, you can, you can criticize the bugs and glitches all you want, but I'm glad that it loads quick. Oh, here's Argenta. You know, really, this original cast of characters you get, to me, are my favorites. You pick up some other characters along the way. But I just like the, the starting crew. It's, it's just fine. She's kind of like a paladin. My light. My emperor. Of course, even she's got her problems. There's no clear-cut good guys. Or good gals, I guess. Uh, this situation. White-haired warrior turns to face you. So she's good with a flaming weapon. Sister Argenta, it is a relief to see you. And a kind of a machine Your gun like character. It is unfamiliar. Who are you? Heavy weapons. At least that's the way I set her up. You, you, you give her a good flame weapon and buff that up and she will take out almost as much as the psychers and navigators. And it's just a, a sight to behold. Uh, let's see, do we want to say anything special? The hour is dark and daunting. The ship abounds with corruption. The faces of friends who are twisted by sneers of heresy. The eyes of yeah, she's a little bit like... too puritanical. Sister, I beg of you. Fanatical. Now is not the time for interrogations. The ship. That answer does you credit. Only the truly righteous would be so provoked by the accusation of heresy. I cannot wait to rain <laughs> righteous fire down upon each and every. It'll be fun to play this game and just go with the Xenos. What do they call it? Xeno. Uh... Forget the term they use, but just. To... The assumption is that all Xenos are bad. Uh, you can't play the game where you become friendly with them, or you could just go with the bias, <laughs> the Imperium. <laughs> yeah, that's Sister Argentum, all these characters have pretty captain. interesting backstories. Enough idle chatter. I won't bore you with that right door. now. We will follow. Good to hear it. Ready. But yeah, she's one of my favorite characters. I, I almost always have her in the party if I can. Uh, she's got this two-handed weapon. A little submachine gun, I guess. Bolt. I'm not quite sure why they call it bolt. If it means bolt action or it fires a bolt. You see, it's got a very high recoil, so she might hit once, but then it'll be, you know, good luck hitting again. Yeah, it looks like they gave her a pistol as a backup weapon, I guess, in case she's uh, face to face. She's got a little Medicaid medical kit. I guess we don't really need to do anything else to her. She's got medium armor. You know, later she'll get some kick-ass armor. If you do her all her missions. Oh, I guess I should explain this too. So, money 
and the items inventory works a lot different in this game than Pathfinder or a 5e. You basically you can pick up stuff and it goes to the ship, and then you can trade that later for reputation points. There's no money, <laughs> no gold coins, uh, but if you get your profit factor up, and then you uh, get reputation up, you'll be able to get all these reputation items. Uh, so that's the way that works. So if it says to cargo, it just automatically means you can't use it in any way on your character. So it just goes into that cargo slot. And then certain items, uh, if you don't want these axes, you could say just put it in the cargo. You could say always put it in the cargo. And so we could go ahead and do that. Uh, just because it's in the cargo doesn't mean we can never use it. Now we go to cargo manager here. Oh, where is it? There we go. Uh, you can see they're still here. You know, we could drag it back to the inventory. Uh, and if you get enough in these, uh, enough of them, it says 100%, which means it's good to trade. And once you trade it for reputation points, then you do lose it. Uh, but until then, you could come back in here and dig it back out again. And then the certain factions will only want certain kinds of cargo. So it's a pretty well uh, thought out system. I had a, got an axe here. Is this better? One handed melee weapon. Let's see. So it does more damage than the sword, but we lose that parry. Well-maintained axe. So I guess it probably does a little something different. Uh, let's just go ahead and equip it instead of the uh, the sword. <laughs> Looks pretty cool. Yeah. I like an axe. Victory oh, some more goods here. Now, I don't know if it'll automatically pick up the stuff that's in chests and things, so you might want to manually pick those up. Now, I got a pretty good crew going here. Uh, shit has some pretty good battles coming up. Oh, yeah, here we go again. There's also grenades. I don't think I have any grenades yet, but that could be a big part of your play because there's a lot of skills you can pick up that. Really optimize the use of those grenades. You get a free attack. Uh, there's ways to get uh, renewable supply of them so you don't run out. Uh, let's see. How do I want to open? Well, I just don't think you can really... When they're bunched up like this... Yeah, see? I hit three of them. <laughs> oh, I just love this. Look. Never gets old. Okay, looks like nothing but half cover available. Uh, sticker there, I think. Stick my guy a little closer. Let Abelard. You know, sometimes if you have them bunched up together like this, uh, their effects work better. You don't always want to spread everybody way out. It's usually a good idea, you know, especially if the enemy has area attacks, but, you know, you can do this too. Uh oh. Yeah, I'm so used to seeing uh, Abelar get his his free attack. Okay, there we go. Now you see, if I hit this guy, it's gonna hit two. <laughs> it's gonna hit me and Abelard. <laughs> bad idea. Over here, it only hits bad guys. So, good idea. Might as well use this. Ex analyze enemies. A little extra damage. Why not? My ears are ringing. Ooh, why does why did he take damage? You know, even after all this time, I don't know why he took damage. It wasn't indicating him. Can we figure out why he took damage? What is it? Let's see. Oh, I guess four targets. Okay. <laughs> Duh. So we did a little damage to Abelard, but we took out two of the enemies. Again, there are abilities we can get that will uh, uh, mitigate friendly fire, especially on our uh, warriors. Oh, she's almost dead. That's not good. All right, so she's got... Uh... No, I don't have the flamethrower yet. But she's got a single shot, which is a little more accurate. Or we can try for this uh, multi-shot. But as I told you, the... Rejoice in battle. You can see it's not going to hit... 
every shot. Let's just see what happens. I'd be surprised if we even hit it at all. <laughs> but, oh no, she she did okay. <laughs> well, you know, sometimes you get lucky with that. And then she's got run and gun. Doubt is for the weak. So that's basically we can move again and attack again, but it's got a penalty on it. Yeah, after this turn, she'll be winded, and we'll take a temp penalty to ballistic skill and basically suck hitting anything, but should be able to single shot this guy. Boom. Oh, I still got some enemies? Oh, <laughs> yeah. We still got some enemies. Now what does this do? Gives us momentum. Uh, these guys are within five cells. Okay. <clears throat> As the Emperor commands, I act. No, they might actually kill her. Let's see if they... I don't think they have a... A couple of them do. Alright, so you gotta be a little more careful here. Let's go ahead and move him. Yeah, I think we can move him maybe here. My place is at the fall. Let's use our... Brace for impact. Bendy. And then we can charge. And... Oh, I didn't quite do that right. We can still get another at attack. If I'd positioned just right, I would have been able to do my cleave. These guys will get their shots. As long as they're shooting your tank, it's okay. You know, the tricky thing with that charge... I think it... Yeah, I guess for now it doesn't really matter, but you can get some uh, perks that will make that do more damage depending on how far they go. But as long as we're within two cells at this point... Suits my purposes. Oh, he's not quite dead. Okay, I don't think we need to use that here. Let's go ahead and him out. Well, I guess we might as. It doesn't say it's only this turn. Sometimes you have to read it very carefully because they only last for one round or something. Other ones will basically work the next attack. Okay. Can I get her close enough to those guys to do the lightning? Now, would you guys like to ride the lightning? Make sure I'm not going to hit my own people again. Doesn't look like it. Let's Anything try else? It. Oh, it yeah, it didn't hit me that time. Or did it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it hit Argenta? Well, as long as they don't die, you're okay. <laughs> oh, she's got broken ribs somehow. Oh, that sucks. Somehow she got a trauma. We'll see. I doubt it. I'll lay claim to the star. He might be able to heal her. Let me help. <sighs> Thank you. No, see, I didn't get rid of it. Try it again. This wound will make a fine scar. I owe you one. Who's got higher? She's got a little bit higher Medicaid. I'm kind of wasting these. The feeling of wonder. Trying to show you how difficult it can be. Oh, just in time. Yeah, see, so there's just no getting rid of those broken ribs. She'll have to deal with that until we time. get to a resting spot. Let's see. Goods. All these little battle stimulants you can find. I haven't found any yet. Sometimes those will get rid of uh, traumas for you. So other than the very real danger of killing yourself with friendly fire, <laughs> these psychers are pretty Okay, before we open that door, let's see if we got any upgrades. Just another scrappy auto gun, a sword. Hello? Open the door. Strength and toughness reduced by 20. That sucks, but really the action points being reduced by 1 is what really sucks. Experience. Nothing matters more. I won't tolerate weakness. See, one of the problems in this game, though, if you were to miss that roll, 
which you probably wouldn't with 100%, but if you were, you might be just locked out of there forever and never be able to get to this loot unless you reload. So that's a constant problem. And there's a lot of secret stuff that you have to have a high awareness to be able to see. Uh, so these are some gloves to give you plus three bonus to tech use. Again, that's probably one of the most important things. So it looks like for now, my character actually has the highest value. And again, that's the only thing that matters. It'll automatically go with the highest one. Now, the problem is it only matters. Uh, the bonuses only kick in with the... Uh, first number. Does that make sense? Tens. <laughs> so this is still only a four bonus. Uh, the eight doesn't matter. If you make it a five, uh, then it would kick in and be a nice bonus. So kind of like, you know, 5e, only the even numbers matter. Same thing here, except None it's uh, tens. My way. So if you have a hundred bonus, yeah, that's getting uh, pretty considerable. Excellence matters. Take use 100 percent again. I rise to the occasion. And there's also a way to get advantage, basically, on these rolls. If you get the base skill and then you stack that with an advanced version of it, then you can roll twice uh, for each of these rolls. Which you, you kind of hate to waste your skills on that, but unfortunately, it is important enough. Unless you want to save scum a lot, <laughs> you probably. We'll have to have advantage, time. at least on tech use. And these melted charges are really critical, too, because there's only a certain number in the game. And there's often there's no other way to get to something I except with a melted charge. Oh, there's a shotgun. The shotguns are really uh, useful weapons because they have kickback. You know, they knock enemies back when shot at effective range. Now, you might not think that's so useful, but well, one of the things that's nice about this, again, if you can knock them back, uh, then you could shoot them with a, you know, if they're right on top of you, let me think about what I'm saying here. Uh, so maybe you've got a situation with another character, somebody adjacent to them. Uh, so you could use this to knock him back so they could use their uh, range powers. Uh, so they're useful that way. But again, I don't think it'll let us use this at point blank range. It's... Uh, we can experiment with it. Let's put it on Avalar just to play with. Hopefully I can remember to do that. But I'm pretty sure... Follow my lead. That you can't use that at point... Yeah, here we go. Uh, blow the door up. So let's use one of our melted charges. I've been in a situation where I didn't have any melted charges. I just wasn't able to proceed through a level until I found one. Okay, so you can see the leveling up is... There's a lot of leveling. <laughs> In theory, what's going on here? I guess I have to wait for those guys to run out. We shall prevail. Wait, did I even get the pick? What the hell happened there? Uh, what did it do? Oh, I think this... Uh, I think for this level, we don't get to pick anything. It's just... Yeah. So they just get a new ability... She gets exposed weakness. She gets revel and slaughter. All I good won't stuff. tolerate weakness. Okay. See the loot popping up here. It does a decent job of telling you where the loot is. Is there more? There's a door. I like to pick up all the loot before I start opening up doors. It might be a nice upgrade that'd be useful to have. This ocular implant was a worthwhile. Oh, I see that my awareness kicked in. I get that secret item. Lock picking tool. I guess those are useful enough. Looks like some combat down there. So let's let's see. I don't think I'll be able to get to any of this other loot right now. It says there's some down here. Okay, which way do you want to go? Challenge for me. Yeah, let's go through the door. Done. That's on fire. Yes. Ooh, a helmet. Grants plus five armor. I'll lay claim to the stars. Well, I think I'll put that on my guy. 
Hmm. Never hurts to have free armor. You know, later on in this game, you're going to have so many helmets and items, and you're just going to be so mystified about what's actually better. A little bit of this, or a little bit of that, or... It's often not real clear what's better. Who is this? Oh, that's Theodora. Are you lost my hair? Where is it? A sorcerer's apparition! That's one of the things that happens during these warp events. A lot of ghosts, spirits. Probably a safe to... <laughs> if somebody walks out of a fire, probably safe to assume it's a, a spirit. To the void with you. People. Ah. Alright, so here we get into the... I guess the first time we get to pick one of these... Uh, I guess alignment choices. And so these also have bonuses with them. Uh, you're probably better off, I think, to stick with one path, because that's the only way to get to the higher levels and get the cool perks. You try to mix it up a lot, you, you won't get very far. So you can be dogmatic, which is basically the Empire way. Uh, heretical, pretty much what it sounds like. The iconoclast is generally the nice guy approach. So I'm going to go dogmatic. Blind faith. Thousands of needles pierce your consciousness and are powerless to stop. You. Take a step forward and the illusion breaks. Alright, I guess that was a good choice. <laughs> Except for those guys. <laughs> they didn't have the faith. Secret symbol of the Imperium. I guess you could say there's a little bit of Roman Can you influence, me? Roman history. Oh, you're alive. Praise the Emperor. We passed through the flames. Well, she's happy. Anything. <laughs> and Dora, Adira, she's a heretic, so she's not, probably not so happy. It was glowing. You're delirious. Whatever it is you think you are seeing. <laughs> there was no Theodora, witch. There was an illusion. A little inner party conflict Whatever always it was, it matters no longer. Okay, let's the go. Wounds are merely a sign no element holds power over the righteous. Look at me. I am righteous. And there's our other heir. It is time to push the heretics back. Ah, get a lore check. 80% so we could... Might be able to do this. I've been like 90% or even sometimes 100% still somehow lost, so we'll see. Yep, succeeded that time. So every time you succeed with these checks, you get experience, which is good. And 20 XP is not a bad... might not sound like much, but you know, the way the levels are structured, it's, it's not bad. You know, unfortunately, the game is so glitchy, sometimes uh, that same option will pop up again. You keep clicking it, keep getting 20, and the, just level up infinitely. <laughs> At least not... A, I haven't seen that kind of bug here yet. I can fight. Let's go fight. So I'm ready for the assault on the bridge. Here go Theodore's chambers. Yeah, might be able to find some more items. Let's see about these loots. Get to the loot. There we go. Always like to find the loot. Unfortunately, the I don't think I don't think I'll be able to get down there. You really have to watch these guys around traps and fire and stuff like that. Because even though you can see the trap, they'll just walk right into it, or they'll go right through fire. It's really annoying. <laughs> you know, you'd think you'd think they'd be a little bit better at pathfinding. Ew. You have to sometimes uh, individually walk each one to try to keep them from going into the fire. Victory awaits. We should deal with this. Oh, there's another. The purple means it's a secret item. Smart. 
cargo. Something of interest. Oh, something else. Yeah, sometimes they say that, and I can't see what <laughs> you know, what it is. Sometimes they can even be aware of things beyond the door. That's really great awareness. <laughs> I won't tolerate. Okay. Oh, there's some goods. Ooh, some spectacles. Grants plus three logic. So what I like to do is just see who's got the highest logic score. Uh, it looks like it's going to be her for now. I guess she's tied with Argenta. Okay. Ooh, I got a fresh injury. That's okay. I'll lay claim to the stars. Well, it's the Lelio. Let's go to her quarters. So I'm moving at a good clip. We haven't even got to the ship combat. I mean, there's a lot. We got a long ways to go just to get through this uh, sort of prologue. Okay. It's about time. Try. I like to see if I can spot the enemies so we can get the jump on them. Later on, when we get to some of those prestige classes, we'll actually be able to not only put our guys where we want them, but set up special zones and give those zones bonuses. Or penalties if we put them on the enemy. Okay. None shall stand in my way. Ooh, another helmet. Requires dogmatic follower. The helmet grants us where immunity to enemy critical hits for the first three rounds of combat. Uh, so one of the things that really makes this game different than... Uh, Uh, than 5e, I guess, is the critical hits. So you know with the 5e, it's basically you roll a uh, natural 20. So there's really a low chance of getting those. Uh, whereas in this game, if you get really insane ballistic or weapon skill, uh, you know, if you could, if your aim is really, really good, you'll be getting a lot of critical hits. But they also means the enemies get them on you as well. So even... Uh, you know, stuff that is limited to critical hits, like such and such will happen if you get a critical hit. You know, in 5e, it's kind of worthless because it hardly ever happens. Uh, whereas in this game, it's very valuable. So you'll get to use a lot more than you might think. So that improves fellowship. Uh, so I think, yeah, his ability, this is where it starts to get complicated, right? Like how important is fellowship to your character? You can look at their abilities to see if they mention any kind of bonus from uh, Fellowship. And sometimes you can hover over these numbers to see if they change. I don't see anything about Fellowship. Let's see what this is. This is a toughness check. Or toughness is the source of that bonus. I think his... Uh, is it Brace for Impact? That This is uh, based on archetypes. Uh, did, uh, somebody's got something that has to do with the uh, fellowship. I know it's useful for uh, for persuasion. I guess I'll go ahead and put it on him. Let's see. The coercion is fellowship and persuasion, so you put those on. You know, for some reason, it's not bumping that up. Oh! For each enemy. <laughs> Durr. Uh, so this wouldn't really be useful uh, for in, in dialogue. So I just put it on him. I don't know what fellowship... You know, I, I feel like something... I seem to remember him having something to do with fellowship. I can't get any more info about this. Is there a way to learn more about... No. Oh, maybe I'm just making it up. <laughs> Wait, maybe it's her that has the... No, that's a weapon. Or that's willpower. And so she needs willpower for her furious recital. And I don't... Let's see. Psi rating and perception. 
Yeah, I doubt that's got anything to do with the fellowship. That's intelligence. Uh, so I don't know. Maybe fellowship's not all that... You can spend a lot of time just thinking about all the alternatives, though, right? Who needs fellowship? We got a necklace, too. Plus 10 bonus to commerce and lore. So this will be a little bit easier. Let's see, commerce and what was it? Lore Imperium. So that'd actually probably be pretty useful for our main to have. So again, there'll be a lot of dialogue just with him. Eh, nothing there. Eh, I guess we should just talk to him. Check the situation out. Theodore... Theodora von Valencia's body sprawled on the large pledger's desk, still clutching weapon. Emperor, accept thy faithful souls. No! No! Lord Captain, I didn't hear. Did... No. Uh, Lord Captain. It could have happened in the heat here. Of how could Mort have failed her so terribly? Mort. <laughs> so let's spend most of the game trying to figure out what, what happened here and what's the context of all of this. Touch her, examine the body. I guess this is her bodyguard. Inspect the shards. Yeah, maybe Theodora has been dabbling in some of the black arts. Papers. Handwritten letter with a seal. Yes. No, wait. Adira. Adira. You... Come on. A new challenge for me? Let's see, just a letter. Lots of text you can read. At least we have a little more context for what happened. That'll come into play later. Go to camp. Oh, <laughs> check. I wish I could go back to my uh, ship so we could get rid of these injuries. I won't tolerate weakness. How the hell do I get out of here? Just this way. No, that's the wrong way. Other left. This should be the. Here we go. Ooh, more we are truly blessed this day. I will take you down. This you can look over here to see the initiative. So we get to we get to go first. So I'm just gonna put them out in the open. Yeah, why don't we put her out? So let her take give her a clear shot. Okay, that's I'm trying to keep these guys away from the. I'm going to go ahead and put Tucker back behind there. Yeah, let's try this. Okay. So that uh, lightning staff affects four people, so we can, should be able to hit them. And let's let him... Let's look at his... Uh, so he, he has a line. So I don't think I'll be able to really cleave effectively. So let's just go ahead and charge it here. Oh, I kind of messed that up. So you see what I mean? I can't move again. So I have to uh, use my gun. I'll be able to hit something. It will be done. Eh. Victory is imminent. Ability. I don't know if it'll happen after the fact. You know, if, this, if that is that applied, applied once, and you're out of luck, or can I get closer to him at this point? You still get the benefit. I don't know. Nothing I can't do. This guy out. Da, da, da. Not too far out. And the same thing with this goes to first. Oh, cool. Okay, then we got her. Kind of running out of bad guys already. Let's. Guided by faith. Oh, okay. So if you notice when I moved her up, she got the benefits of this brace for impact. So that's good to know. So you could activate that and then just scoot you guys in close for that perk. 
Okay, and then Fury's Recital. This ability also grants an additional three of momentum for each enemy that is either in a five cell or radius around the sister. So that's a... Should be able to get some pretty good uh, momentum on that. Yeah, I ranged, uh, changed from 22 to 162. Unfortunately, I don't think I have any of those abilities yet. I don't know if it does anything for you other than that. Momentum. Yeah, I thought I don't know if it does anything other than just give you the option to use those heroic acts they call it. Okay, I think probably there. Like we can do our run and gun and get another attack on these guys. Not there. <laughs> you can see it's not very accurate, but still a little bit of damage. Now we're probably going to kill ourselves a little bit. Uh, but probably still worth it. Looks like it's going to take a big chunk of my health. What does this do? Dodge? I don't know if this is something you can dodge, though. I don't know if you can even dodge that. See, this combat servitor is only going to take a little bit of damage. He must have some kind of armor. Yeah, 80% armor. Okay. Let's go ahead and hit him with an exploit, then. We'll do. That should kill those. It did do 7 damage to me, but that's okay. All right, now he's going to get an attack. See her dodge, isn't that cool? Okay, and then I think we just... You know, so what I... Let's try this. Let's move back. Now I can charge. <laughs> attack. Oh, he's got a lot of armor. Wow. Yeah, 80% damage reduction is pretty serious. I think I should... Yeah, okay. I forget, did I give him an axe? Yeah, so we can put bleeding on him. Nothing I can't do. They call it sweet for whatever reason. But it's not a cleave, it's uh, just gives you bleeding. It doesn't say... Oh yeah, there's also melee superiority. So if you get enough characters, if you surround somebody or vice versa, you get bonuses or penalties. There's a lot of... this is a crunchy game, folks. There's a lot to it. You know, just to see... I just, uh... This would be bad gameplay, but just to show you what I'm talking about. So if I move in close... I will bathe this battlefield in righteous oh. fury! Okay. I didn't think it would let me attack with a two-handed weapon if I got in close, but I guess... I wonder why it's letting me do that. Okay, I don't know what's up with that. Maybe it's a glitch. I thought that if I was close like this, I wouldn't be able to use my two-handed weapons. Maybe a bolt. I'll do it. Maybe there's something special about her weapon. I didn't say. All right, I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? Okay, so I definitely don't want to use my lightning in this circumstance, but she does have a psychic shriek. I could single him out, and that should finish him off. What an unfortunate turn of fate. He leveled up again. Yay. Laser pistols. Grace of the Oblivious. Gains plus five toughness if their intelligence is less than 35. Oh, boy. Does anybody oh, have that low? low? What about me? Oh, I'm only 25. <laughs> Uh, so I guess for now I can put it on my character. But I want to get smarter. Man, wouldn't that be a great gift to give somebody? Way. Here's a great necklace. You can only wear it if you're really stupid. <laughs> Gee, thanks. All right, now we're getting into some interesting uh, talents. I guess I've been calling them perks, but you can see there's a bunch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that you can go to different categories and try to figure out like what is the best thing to pick if you want something quick and easy 
Uh, you know, usually it's you can't go wrong leveling up these uh, characteristics because that'll affect pretty much everything you do. Or you can get into the nitty gritty and look at some of these. Okay, so if you get hit, you do more damage. You can rage. Uh, when you get attacked, uh, you get these. There's uh, basically ways that you benefit from being attacked. You get extra bonuses every time you're attacked. So good, really good for a tank like character. Or if you like being in the midst of a bunch of enemies. Uh, this is that damage deflection. And you see, the, the nice thing about this is it scales. So one damage uh, gains one point of damage deflection. The parry chance increases by 25% of the armor. So as I get better armor, you know, that this will... Uh, and I like to look for... Uh, uh, what do they call these again? Talents <laughs> that scale. Instead of just giving you a little weak... Uh, one time a benefit. Yeah, this is uh, this will make charge, so we do more damage based on tough bonus, strength bonus. Uh, when the ability is used from a distance of five or more cells, and then there's one here that gives you three more cells of charge. So you can see uh, if you want to do a lot of charging, you might want to get both of those. Let's see. What, I'm trying to think of what I want to pick for my first thing. Plus five damage deflection against the first attack made by every enemy. So every time. Uh, the first attack made by every enemy this combat. So I don't know if that means just if they're attacking me or first attack, period. And so that's a bit of a question mark, but uh, you know, five points off is not bad. Parries an attack. Incredibly deft. Charge and slash do not end the warrior's movement and grant dodge for one round after use. So this gives me a little more uh, mobility. So I could charge and then still move again after the charge. So that might be one of the best options at this point. Field Medic. Swift Movements, I think, just two movement points. Uh, the Nimble gives me more dodge, but again, as a if, I'm, if I want to play this character as a tank, I probably want to focus more on other things. Than, I want to parry and then get a counterattack. That's what I... I really like. Of course, having more hit points is always useful. Uh, heavy armor, you know, some of these are kind of iffy. Dual weapon combat. Probably won't even find heavy armor until much later in the game. Dual weapon combat is kind of interesting. Uh, again, you really have to think about the uh, the movement. You know, where are you? I think there's also a penalty to it. You get two what attacks. As long as you have two weapons. So that's something to think about. Or we could go for these all-important skills. Uh, here's the grenadier I was telling you about. So with this, you get one grenade. doesn't spend the, any action points. And you can still attack after that. So if you want to use a lot of grenades, it's pretty much a must, I would say. And then we've got some talents that are based on just this character. Uh, like when we use that at all cost thing. What does this do? When momentum is less than 100 points, at all cost grants 20 plus 2 times. Oh, so there's a fellowship bonus. And so this would be a use for fellowship. 20 plus 2 times fell bonus momentum upon killing the marked enemy or targeting an ally. So basically make that a little more useful. If the Commissar kills the target without all costs, they can use that all costs. What's more, this combat for zero AP. So that's, again, very useful. At any time the Commissar grants additional movement points, they give plus two movement points more. Okay. While the Commissar is adjacent to an enemy, all their allies gain plus Commissar's fell bonus resolve. Now that's an interesting one. So if you really had this guy in the midst of a bunch of enemies and you had a high fellowship, it's only three. So if you look at this, my my fellowship bonus is basically three, 30. Again, just the tens. So it's three divided by two. So you're looking at one, I guess. Uh, but, you know, the more resolve you have, the faster they get to use their really powerful abilities. At all costs, that ally suffers 50% less damage, but gains plus two AP and plus four. Okay. 
Wait a minute. While the commissar's ally is under the effects of at all costs, that ally suffers 50% more damage. Oh, I see. So it makes them a lot more vulnerable, but they get the they get two more action and, and four movement. That's interesting. It's always like a trade-off. I mean, I, I've spent hours and hours studying all these different things, but I actually need to take a little break here, I think. So I'll stop it here for a minute. You won't notice. <laughs> I will be back and we'll finish up this prologue. Are we back? I think we're back, yes. <laughs> Let's get back into it then. Okay, woo, 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 woo. Where are you going? Uh, so look at this. We already get to level up again. The thing I like about this game is lots of leveling, 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 leveling. During Breach, the warrior immediately restores all AP and MP. So basically a free turn. And gains AGI bonus MP until the end of the turn. They don't lose they don't lose MP after performing attacks. So we could attack and then run some more. So that's pretty awesome. No limit on melee weapon attacks this turn. So that's our Yeah, that's our heroic act. Yeah, I feel like I was just looking at this. <laughs> Uh, okay, so what did we pick last time? Oh, we got our keystone feature. Uh, so, you know, I might want to go for something that... Man, look at all these. Some of these are I haven't seen before. Death World characters gain 10% critical hit chance for axes, hammers, and laser weapons. Oh, that's interesting that there's a laser weapon in there. So I could use my axe, my hammer... Yeah, doesn't that just sound appropriate for, for my character that would have that? <laughs> yeah, hit it with a laser axe. Agility and willpower by five. Every trauma counts as three injuries. What? Yeah, so this is one of those, I guess, where the more damage you take, the better off you get. Oh, especially like that sort of thing. I think we can... Divide them up this way. And these are the origin talents, so these would be unique to this character, I suppose. For uh, Death World characters. Then this is uh, his stuff related to being a warrior. And then there's universal ones in various categories. Uh, let's just go with this. You know, there'll be plenty of opportunities to pick other stuff later, so you don't have to get too upset. We're too fixated on picking the very best one because again you have lots of other opportunities to get more stuff all allies affected by brace for impact gain an extra turn with zero ap so they can't do anything but they can move this one lets you use any ranged weapon in the threatened area so you could use a, a two-handed ranged weapon without any problems Knocks enemies prone and pushes them one cell away. And that's getting pretty cool because they got the waste of turn standing up. So you basically cost them a turn. So that might be a pretty good choice. Or we could uh, look at some of these other things. I kind of like him being able to charge. I really like him. See, I'm trying to find the one that lets him uh, counterattack whenever he parries. That might come later. Uh, it's just ramming speed. Okay, and then for her. One thing you really want to look for is uh, Psy rating on your Psyker. So you see, she's got to wait to level 10. Uh, but this, you know, you always want to pick these, I think, whenever they pop up. Because uh, this, again, all of her psychic abilities will ramp up uh, with that psych rating. So until then, though, let's see what else we have. Uh, so everybody will get a 15% chance critical hit extra until their first critical hit, and then it'll go away. Obscured threat. Subtle manipulation. You know, there's a lot of good options for her. Like this one will make that Veil Degradation not such a big issue. So instead of going up three points for a Major, it'll just go up two points. Or go up one point, or even none. Used each turn. So that's, that's a good one for sure. 
Uh, this one. Wow. That one lets you shoot stuff a lot further away. But you get something really good for a psychic, because I don't really want her on the front line. <laughs> uh, weak hearts. Okay, okay. So if they're blinded, stunned, immobilized, or prone, they suffer 10% more damage. Wow, so many good options. I like this pain channeling, because this will let you get a bunch of different attacks. So it lets you kill even more enemies. And so if you have a little bit left over from killing one, uh, it'll damage the next enemy. So it specifies enemy. <laughs> so I assume that wouldn't hit my friendly targets. You know, that one, uh, that, that definitely might be worth picking that one up. I think it's a safe choice. You can always uh, pick more later, of course. And then we got our soldier. I guess she doesn't have any warp features, but we've got lots of cool. Does she have a flame attacks already? Let's see. Does she have the flamer? Uh, she doesn't have flame weapon expert, but I'm pretty sure she's got uh, flame proficiency. They have to have the proficiency before they can get the expertise. It's like she's already got that. You know, the thing about bolters... Or bolts. I think she's already. Yeah, she's got this. Does she a bolter expert? No, she's not a bullet weapon expert. We could give her this. And that gives her 10% armor penetration to this, those bolter attacks. Uh, so if you really like that idea of the bolter, bolt weapon, that'd be a pretty good chance. Well, this is interesting. Each shot fired. Grants them plus one agility until the end of their next turn. And so this is basically, I guess, help with uh, dodging. And since she's getting a whole bunch of shots, I wonder if that scales with the rate of fire. So if she gets like seven shots, is that 7%? <laughs> More agility? Sounds like it. Yeah, this one's a really compelling one. Um, so, there's, so as long as she's just got medium armor, it will... Uh, let the dodge, it'll take away that .5 or whatever it is, dodge bonus. Let's just take a quick look at that. So right now, she's taking a .75 penalty for dodge. The only thing about this is I know that late, very late in the game, a little bit of a spoiler here, but she will get some uh, special armor. So I don't know how useful that would be ultimately, but that is a long ways off. So that might be a solid choice. That bumper dodge up quite a bit. You know, I think that's a pretty compelling option. Because I do want her dodging. On the other hand, look at all this other cool stuff. Melt, melee flame and melt attack. She doesn't have a flamer yet. 3% chance to ignore. Oh, this is interesting. The devotee gains a 3% any enemy attack. So that's just a straight 3%. What is that based on? Willpower. So that's that's the willpower bonus. So if I bump up her willpower, that would uh, scale with this. Any enemy attack. Huh. Huh, he says. <laughs> Now that might be pretty cool thing. I like that it scales with willpower, but I don't know if she's really going to be getting a lot of willpower. Uh, uh, and you got Nimble, which is another bonus to dodge. I think this one is... It goes up with something, probably agility. I know Nimble scales. I think it is agility. Uh, why don't we just do this for now? Give her a little bit better survivability. So you see how that glitched? So the dodge should have gone up there. Because it uh that penalty went away. So let's see if we can figure out what's going on with that. Might have to take the armor off. Back on. Well that was weird. I could have sworn it was 80% before we even got the feet, so I don't I don't know what's going on. Let's just hope it worked. 
Victory Ready awaits. Bridge. Oh, there's some more goodies. You know, it's worthwhile picking up all that stuff. It might you might not think it right off that uh the first sacrifice opens the eye. It's very the useful to have as many goods as you can. Draws its gaze. You probably won't finish getting all the reputation even by the end of the game. So try to collect it all. Some of the best stuff. Here's Edelthrad. Let's not give him any details. No. We will perish along with the warp. I forbid you the very thought of yielding. <laughs> it's worthy of... <laughs> Man, me and Argenta are going to be uh, hooking up, I guess. <laughs> Dira doesn't like us. Say the lofty words for later. We have no right to bow our heads. You know, this uh, getting up on a combat here that we... It could wipe us. You know, it's... Not an easy peasy game. Ready your weapons if we are to die this time. Will that happen like this? I'm pretty sure he's gonna commit himself no matter what we do here. Theodora is dead? What? Conrad, Conrad. Your ritual won't be finished, heretic! That's a knife. There's not a whole lot of cinematics, but when they, when they have them, they're good. <laughs> Look at that thing. <laughs> Death will find you soon enough. Oh boy, yeah. This is, uh, got seven enemies. Chaos spawn! 20% armor, 32% dodge. Toxic spurt. That sounds nasty. Ah. Yeah, so let's see if we can take this guy out pronto. Go ahead and move him up. Zero Genta might let her have some cover. Madeira. Should be able to hit him from there. Maybe put it there just for, just to be safe. Oh, what's a bunch of enemies? Uh, so I'm gonna go, and then our is gonna go, and then we're gonna have quite a <coughs> quite a lag. <coughs> hmm. So if Argenta gets to go early, maybe we should move her up close so she can use her her ranged attack. Let's try this. We'll go ahead and use our at all costs. I'll pass. I probably should have moved back a little bit so we can try. Never in the face of adversity. Okay. Ooh, I already get to use my daring breach. Okay. Already done. Oh, he dodged. Let's see if we can make him bleed. Touched again. Well, let's try our special attack up. then. Got him that time. He's a bleeder. I wonder if I do more damage with this than my... Eh, yeah, sweep. I want to make sure I have enough action points left for my endure. Yeah, let's just go ahead and do that little attack, then we'll hit our endure. Oh, you can move. Do I want to move him? Eh. I guess we could move. I'm just going to leave him there. Alright. Okay, is that our best attack? I think so. All right, uh, she gains momentum. Doubt is for the weak. Let's go ahead. I'll do it. So that didn't do much damage, but we can run and gun. Faith without deeds is worthless. 
probably going to want to get her away from that thing a little bit, I think. Hmm. Well, this is kind of tricky. Maybe I'll just move her back to... Nope, can't move her there. Yeah. Well, what to do? Maybe I'll move to... Here. God Emperor, move through me. Be the fire in now, see, so I could take this guy out. Why is letting me attack? Right up in their face like this. I don't know if that's a glitch or I'm just somehow or another getting that perk. Now this is kind of interesting. So you see that over penetration they were talking about. So this the shots will go through. I'll do it. <laughs> oh, what the hell? I guess he's devouring his own guys there. Just a minor setback. No, oh, Avalard's bleeding. Well, I guess every time I kill one of these cutthroats, he gets to suck their life force or something. Okay, so she could take out a nice little passel of them. But I think I'm going to have to be right close to that monster to do it. Uh, when does it get to go? Oh, it goes next, too. Crap. Well, I'm not so sure. I guess we'll try it. There is movement in the Empyrean. I like the idea of taking all three of those guys out. Oh. I'm not sure what it's. Uh, I should have read its abilities a little more closely, I guess. Yeah, she gets dismantling attack too, but her little weapon there is not all that. Great. As a melee, at 48 points of damage. It does have a 100% hit chance. That's pretty cool. It seems to be going for Avalard a lot, so I'll give him a little buff there. Okay. Still hit him. Time to prove my metal. Wounded him. We might need to back him out and get some uh, first aid on him. Let's see. Attack first. Oh, I'm not close enough. Oh, okay. Let's go ahead and hit him with this healing kit. The healing is much appreciated. Alright, that helped a little bit, I suppose. Then we can back up and charge. Follow my lead. I will do my Ten points. Try this daring breach. Restores all AP and MP and gains three MP until the end of the turn. No matter the cost. Good to know. You can attack a bunch of times. Oh. oh my ears are ringing. What is this devour? The creature devours an allied, restoring 30% of the creature's maximum wounds. So I can just do that at any time? Or whenever it gets below a certain threshold, I guess? Yeah, that would make sense. Okay, I got one more. Let's go ahead and do our. Do that, and then I think we'll activate Endure just to keep this guy alive. He can move, but they'll get an opportunity attack. So just leave him there. I think with this guy. Ooh, I don't know if that'll. If we don't want to do that. Let's try to make him bleed again. I don't know if bleeding stacks or not. Yeah, it doesn't have a stack button on it. Stack indicator. So I'm not sure if it's worthwhile to keep doing that. Already done. <clears throat> Doubt. That did some decent damage. Six impact damage. Nice little breakdown here of all the stats that are involved. Your armor penetration kicking in there. Okay, yeah, she's the interesting one. So let's see, put an exploit on him. On it. That'll we'll bump do. up the damage a little bit. Uh oh, we're getting into <laughs> a little too much veil degradation there. 
guess she's out of actions. Come on, Abelard! Just a minor setback. Whew, this is it's getting intense. I guess we just need to keep wailing on this guy. Suits my purposes. All too easy. Magenta. Yeah, firearm mastery. The soldier gains the ability to make a number of extra attacks equal to the weapon's rate of fire. Using the weapon attack that normally costs the least AP. Alright, so single shots. Let's go ahead and hit him with the I'll do it. All the stuff we can do. Reload. I oh, I can't reload. Oh, I think this reloads your weapon, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. His will made uh, she, she get a lot of shots. This is unacceptable. Oh. Great, running gun time. <laughs> oh, he's still got a little sliver left. Okay, this should finish. Used to be on the safe side, though. Let's hit him with an exploit. Anything in there. Boom! And that's how you do it. it. Leveled up again, just on that one battle. Ooh, I, I, I remember this stuff. Whenever the wearer of these gloves gets an injury or falls unconscious in combat, <laughs> their allies gain plus one bonus to damage. But see, I would rather not have that happen. Uh, this requires an Iconoclast follower. I guess he's got that. Each heroic act used in battle increases the wearer's dodge by 20%. So probably better. Well, I guess he's the only one that can wear it. Okay, well, let's... Uh, yeah, put it on her. These gloves. Who's most likely to... Get an injury. I guess it's poor old Abelard at the moment. Let's go ahead and put those gloves on. How could that possibly work? So you put these gloves on, and if you get an injury, your allies gain bonus to damage? <laughs> yeah, that's... Uh, that makes sense. Somehow that works. Alright, so now we're back to looking at all these options. At all costs, grants momentum upon killing the marked enemy or targeting an ally. Summary execution. You know, this is a pretty cool one, actually, when I think about it. So, if you kill it, then you could use it again. You might be able to kill multiple enemies in one turn. You're going to have it played this, this character before, so I'm kind of learning as we go here. What to pick? I kind of like the sound of that, actually. A lot of good good options at this point. And later on, once you picked a bunch of stuff, then it's like, eh, kind of run out of really good stuff. But for now, I kind of like summary execution. I mean, that just sounds right. <laughs> Okay, here we go. So you can do weapon skill. Again, this is your melee weapons. Toughness, your hit points. Strength, the, the damage with the melee. And then fellowship, we've seen, does some of the social skills. A couple of the, of the uh, um, active abilities. So what I like to do is look to see what's at 5. Because remember, you only get a bonus if it's at, on the 10s. Uh, so if I were to put some 5 points in a weapon skill, that would give me a nice boost. Same thing with strength. Uh, let's go ahead and do weapon skill. Yeah, because what I want to do is start to get more critical hits. Okay, same thing for him. I vary it up a little bit. This will uh, give him a better chance to parry. That's good. Again, you could sink a lot of time, and believe me, <laughs> you're really putting a lot of thought in how do you want to do these things. Yeah, you know, with agility, for example, 
you might say, well, I don't really want him dodging. It's okay to take an attack. He'll have heavy armor on. But it also controls initiative. So that's a... You know, you don't necessarily want your tank going dead last every time. So it might be worth thinking about even though he it's not his main thing. Maybe wouldn't be a bad idea to bump up his agility a little bit. Just so he can go, go earlier. Or stay alive longer or hit more stuff. <laughs> you know, I'm going to go agility just because it's the only one that is actually at a, at a, at a point where it will give me an immediate, immediate return on my investment. You know, there's probably some expert out there that's like, No, you, you idiot! <laughs> You're telling them all wrong! Uh, perception helps you to hit things, I believe, right? With the... Reduces enemy dodge chance against the character's attacks. So they won't be dodging as much. I don't know if that's really so much a factor with her. Willpower is her main stat, but... You know, 65 is not going to be any better than 60. If I am correct about my way bonuses work in this game. Wow, her toughness is really low. 10. And she's only got 20 hit points. Well, that's just for this time. Bump up perception. If nothing else, it'll help find more secret stuff. Uh, you know, you know this ten percent bonus to dodge is not a bad choice uh, for her. So I, she can't take a hit. <laughs> but I think I might want to do this. Uh, uh, let's see, where's the one? Yeah, this one. So she won't activate those uh, perils of the warp so fast. I definitely want to keep using those. And we've got her. Ballistic skills seems like a pretty no-brainer for her. Again, that's guns. Rapid reload. First reload in combat does not cost AP. Not, not bad. Hmm. A lot of these depend on having people adjacent to you or enemies adjacent to you. Uh, she's got a pretty high agility bonus. So this might actually be a good choice for her. The soldier gains 3 plus agility bonus, so 8% critical hit chance. This bonus is doubled against enemies from which the soldier is protected by cover at the moment of the attack. So certainly something to consider. Let's see if we can find one that has something specific to do with area or burst attacks. Oh, this is whenever they deal damage at all. Critical damage increased by 1%. Wow. Oh, that's the damage. So you have to make the critical hit before you <laughs> do the damage. But again, you get a lot more crits than you might think. Uh, cover efficiency. Yeah, combat medicaid maybe. Healing an ally with a medikit. I didn't really use a lot of medikits on my first playthrough. But, you know, that might be worth thinking about because I don't... kind of fits with her persona, I think. Is you know, kind of a paladin would probably know a lot about medicine. Vaguely clerical. Now here's one about area attacks. Enemies damaged by the soldier's area attacks suffer plus one plus BS bonus divided by two damage from the next attack that hits them. Okay, so this might be a way... Yeah, tenderize, right? So you soften up a bunch of enemies. And she's got a pretty good uh, ballistic skill. So that'd be... I guess five by the time we're done here. So that'd be 6 divided by 2, so 3. So they take an extra 3 damage from the next attack. This is a pretty good one, too. While a full wounds, soldier. So if you haven't had any damage, plus 10 to your ballistic skill. So that's enough to make a difference. And 2 movement. That's a good... Ah, so many good options. All the next soldiers game, area. 5 plus 3 times... BS bonus armor penetration and ignore deflection when used against enemies in a three cell radius around the soldier. So that's probably most of the time with this character because she's not going to hit anything that's way far off anyway. So that might be a good choice. Wait, the first hit of each burst attack deals additional damage equal to the weapon's current rate of fire. 
man, I could not decide. It's just so many good things. So many good choices. Now, this is a really good one, too, because that Revel and Slaughter, if you remember, you use this. The run and gun makes you winded, which knocks your aim off. Uh, but then you can do this to get rid of that winded, winded condition and gives you 10 to your ballistic skill. Ratchets up pretty much everything. And you can use it again and again. I don't know if that's by design or a bug or a glitch or what, but it does seem to work. So I'm going to pick that. Let's see, where was it? Where was it? Yeah, Swift Slaughter. Let's pick that. Again, I don't know if these are absolutely the best choices, folks. I'm just having fun. You know, you get to pick a lot of talents as you it's go, so... Time. It's not that big of a deal if you pick a couple of clunkers. Uh, what am I doing here? Follow my lead. I think we're pretty much... We should be getting pretty close to the end of this... Uh, Miss something? <laughs> There's the throw. I, I think I'm going the wrong way. No, okay. However, Master Helsman. I the Emperor. Hmm. So I guess we're in warp right now, I'm trying to get to the navigator to get us out back into normal or real space. May not be the Lord Captain. So I have to become the rogue trader to some extent just to get us out of this pickle. I mean, I mean, the name of the game is rogue trader, folks. <laughs> you probably knew at some point you would be the rogue trader. Here comes Theodora's ghost again. Mortal, who are you to oppose the very flows of fate? Be gone, Phantom. There's it'd be a kind of interesting path. You know, both the, I'm doing it again, my first playthrough, I avoided all the sort of source of contamination, but it might be interesting to just to go with it, try to take sides of this thing. And see what happens. Again, it's not like the Imperium, it's the good guys. So you might not actually be a, have a better result. Going with the people that want to destroy the Empire, or the Imperium. <clears throat> As First Officer, it is my duty to inform you with the greatest regret and indelible sorrow that Lord Captain Theodora von Falancius is dead. May her memory never fade from the annals of the dynasty. Good voice acting. By right of blood succession, and with the absence I of refuse. other kin who could challenge this, it is hereby declared that the successor to Theodora von Valencius is her heir, the rightful inheritor of the her warrant heir. of trade, and the title of rogue trader. The official ascension ceremony will be held at a later time. It in probably won't be too long before they'll be able to oh, use AI to just tongues? say whatever Hail the name Lord. is. It is because in of the his voice. toils that we all still live. How much do you want to bet that's not too far off? They, they might already have that. The deed is done, Master. In my apologies. I meant to say Lord Captain. Yes, yes, yes. So there we are. That's the prologue. I don't the know exactly how long we've been working. Whispers was fruitless, but victory came at a great cost. It just gets better from here, folks. Lord Captain Theodora von Valencius perished along with her heir, Edelthrad, and thousands of crew so Now we gotta patch up our ship, find a navigator. We haven't even got to the awesome, uh, what are they called? Pascal? He's like a servitor, robot. He's not a servitor. Uh, <laughs> tech priest! There we go. We haven't even got our tech priest. He's awesome. Uh, there's a lot of good characters. Well, good in the sense of interesting and sort of fun, but not necessarily uh, virtuous. <laughs> I 
they're all flawed in one way or the other. Which you either like or you hate, depending on you know what you like in your fantasy and sci-fi. Let's see if it'll I think that's probably good enough for just playing around with the intro. I wanted to see if I could show you the space combat. I don't know if it'll let us do that yet. It might be a ways off. I might want to reload one of my saves from my other game. See if I could show you that. Just go ahead and skip this if I can. Ready to start. Yeah, I don't want to go through all this with you. You can see that for yourself. Can I get through these dialogues? Oh, continue. Where is go away? <laughs> oh wow, look at all that. Well, I think I accidentally said continue. Thank you. Oh. Now let me load one of my other games. Let's see if I can show you ship combat, because that's really a big big departure. If this I might be able to do it here. Don't know. But I think you should at least see what the space combat looks like. We'll see. I might have to pause the recording and try to get to a good good spot where there's some space combat. But I, you know, I could see some people actually enjoying it. I just don't like it because it's slow. You know, there's one thing I hate is a turn-based game where you have to wait a long time to watch animations and stuff that's just not really that much fun. Let's see, there might be space combat here. Again, just to speed things up, I'm going to... I guess I could tell you a little bit about this. This is like the galactic map, and once you have your navigator and everything, you can... Travel to these systems, it's basically like travel in any role-playing game. You might have random encounters along the way. Now you have to chart routes or routes to try to find other places you can go. And then within these uh, systems, sometimes you'll see ships you can attack. Yeah, here we go. Okay, perfect. Now, so you'll be able to see what this... Before we do that, if we open up our... Uh, Oh, this is an early save. Wow. Uh, so this scrap is what we use. You get this one from certain quests sometimes, or rewards, but uh, when you defeat ships in combat, you get this scrap, and you can use it to upgrade your uh, ramming device or your hull, as well as uh, special abilities you have on some of your on some of your characters. Oh, I don't even have somebody assigned to that. Oh, she's doing that. Let's put... Come on, there we go. <laughs> Some of these characters, depending on how you level up your ship, which is another thing with this game, you level up the ship too. Uh, you can get special abilities and you can upgrade those abilities as you go along using the, the scrap. Doesn't look like I have enough to, to do anything with yet, so we can just upgrade the hull. <coughs> Probably the most important thing to upgrade anyway. Okay, so yeah, look at this. This will give you a pretty good idea of what to expect. It's very Mass Effect. Well, actually, before I go here. Uh, so it's very Mass Effect in the sense that you find these planets, you scan them, you're looking for resources, and then you can... Sometimes this will be a quest that will take you down to the surface of the planet. Uh, you can try to extract resources if you have these things called extractums, which I don't have at the moment. Uh, and then you use those resources you collect to... Uh, what is this? To manage our colonies. So I only have this one colony here, so this is one of these quests related to that. I didn't mean to activate it. Let's see if I can get through this. Okay, I fix it right. Whatever. Just trying to show you this. Alright, so once you have some planets colonized, uh, there's only about, I think maybe four? Well, after pretty significant quest chains, then you can, again, very like kingdom management. In Pathfinder, you can have special quests that you can put these guys on, working on, and they'll give you perks, and there are a lot of story elements that go along with it. Uh, so that's pretty cool, and there's a lot of them. But you'll notice some of these will require uh, things like mechanisms or plasteel or adamantine, adamantine. And so you have to get the extractiums, which are basically the, re the machines that collect those resources, find the resources, uh, extract it, 
and then you can use that to do those uh, uh, colony quests. Now, one little tip I read early on, I'm glad I saw, is that since you have such a limited number of those extract biomes, uh, at least at the start of the game, uh, you don't want to just waste it. So if you have like a planet, maybe only has one plasteel, you don't want to use an extract biome on that. You want to wait for something, uh, either a lot of the element, uh, or like this, the Xenotech is relatively rare, so you might want to, uh, you know, plunk one down here if you had one. I would just, it's another kind of uh, fun... Uh, tactic and if you really wanted to be good you'd probably can't take notes of like well that maybe you really like that reward you really want that hammer uh, so you could make note of what you need for that and focus your efforts maybe look for more adamantine before you plunk down a <coughs> extract you so i thought that was cool and there's a lot of stuff lots of stuff on the planets to find And I did pretty much every quest I could find in the game, explored everything, and I wasn't in, I think I had maybe six or seven levels left to go before I maxed out my character. So it's not like Baldur's Gate 3 where you hit max level like halfway through the game. <laughs> uh, no, no, this gives you lots. There's I always something. To serve you and the Imperium All right, happen. here's the, the space combat. And it's a little bit, takes a little bit of uh, <clears throat> getting used to, but... See if I can break this down. So you have a, a ram uh, that you can use, but that's only you can only use it during what they call the acceleration phase. So basically, this clear area here. So if I move here, I could use it. If I move there, I could use it. But once I move out of this little area, I can no longer ram something. So you could move there and see. Well, that wouldn't hit. You know, so it lets you let you see what's possible here. Uh, and then these guys in the post will have abilities, depending on how you level up your ship. So, like, uh, let's see, Abelard here is a master of maneuvers. So if I click on this, it'll give me a little bit more maneuverability. So you see now I could move there. Oh, still can't quite hit that. Oh, that, uh, nope. So I still can't use my ram, <laughs> uh, even with that, but it's okay. Now oh, there's five ships. Oh, this is a long battle. So, okay. So, you have to move the full movement every round. So, you can't just end a turn like here. Uh, you have to use it up all the movement. And you can fire along the way. So, what you want to think about is how can I use every one of these uh, weapons? So, like that shoots straight ahead. Then you got torpedoes, which basically are like little mini ships uh, that you can fire and you have a few rounds you can try to they're very powerful but you they're very sort of wonky to control uh but if you do it right then you can let's let's go ahead and put out a torpedo uh so this maybe i'll be able to connect one of these ships with that torpedo after my round here okay so let's try to see if we can hit there we go so with my starboard cannons fire those at him did a little bit of damage. Now I probably won't be able to hit anything with my port side. Oh, I forgot about this. And so this will go to the extent of that and then turn around. So I could conceivably get a, a shot from the other side. Ideally, you use every single cannon every turn. You might not be able to hit the same target every time, but. You know, like this is going to be wasted unless I use this move. Not, not even sure it's going to make any difference. Uh, but just to show you what it does, let's go ahead and use it. So you see what happened? So now I can whip around, shoot him again. Now I wish there was some way to make these numbers just stay on screen, but these are showing you the shield strengths. So what I would need to do if I keep hitting in there, there on that weak side, you know, do more damage than if I hit him on the other side. Same for me. And so if I'm really strategic, I can try to maneuver. My strongest side, side is always pointing at him. Then I have this little ability, which will add a little bit of extra shield strength on one side or one part of the shield. So you see, you see <laughs> get tongue tied here. Uh, so you see there, I've added a, a little extra shield there. Okay, that's all I can do. So hit space. Now wait for these guys to slowly do 
they're doing. This isn't too bad. Some of these battles, though, if there's a lot of ships, you gotta wait for them to do all their attacks. See how slow it moves. You might have to do this these, some of these battles three or four times just to survive. The space combat is way harder than the uh, the other part of the game. I mean, I had to reload these stupid space combats a lot more uh, than I did the ground battles. Now you see, like here, I could maybe hit him. Let's see if we can hit him on his weak side. Maybe let's see if that will do it. Yep, yeah, boom. So we took him out with a torpedo. And I don't think I can hit anybody from this position. And that's got a cool down. So this will probably be a pretty crappy round. Let's see. Yeah, I can't even hit him from there. Is he going to hit anybody? You know, I've tried running away. That didn't work very well either. Yeah, so it looks like our best option might be to... I guess I could ram anybody. Nope. It wouldn't matter anyway. So let's just scoot back here, I guess. We won't be able to do anything this turn. But... Oh well, we could put... Yep, shield's still going. You know, I don't know if it's my imagination or is this combat actually going a little bit faster. <laughs> you know, maybe they've actually, even since I did my playthrough. Maybe they've uh, sped this up a little bit, because it's, it's moving a lot faster than I remember. Now, I want to see if I can use my ram. I always thought the ram was stupid because it uh, damages you pretty bad, but it does a lot of damage to them. Yeah, let's put that out. Need to go one more, and then I think, yeah, there we go. So every part of this can be upgraded. You can get different weapons. There's not a whole lot of options. You know, they could have more. There's a decent amount of customization. You know, one thing I thought was lacking is I really wish you could get, uh, like some of the ships you fight will have these little um, Battlestar Galactic come out. I thought that'd be such a cool thing, but you, know, you can't get that, and there's no way to get a better ship. That's just another limitation. You can get a little escort, but it's worthless, basically. So, you know, I feel the same way about all of these Alcat games, where they're sort of mini-game or sub-game, whatever you want to call it. They're, you know, at best, it's okay. You know, I can't imagine somebody saying that, wow, this space combat really made this game better. That was the decisive factor. You know, it always feels to me more like a sort of afterthought. You know, that maybe somebody said, you gotta have space combat, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's not the focus, it's not gonna be the main game, but you wanna have enough enough stuff to do with this to make it interesting. See, I'm about to get my ass kicked here. And the AI is pretty good, as you can see. Like, he's always seemed to be able to get away from these torpedoes. So I'll give him that. It's not a dumb computer. Some of these space combats are really, really hard. That one's almost dead. Maybe I can... I think he's trying to get away. Nope. He's not trying to get away. The time has come. Uh, that... Let's see. This will let me move a torpedo manually, but... <laughs> yeah, that's... Yeah, that was useful. I guess I'm done here. I guess if nothing else, the torpedoes give him a target to shoot at. <clears throat> Might be able to cheese the mechanics a little bit with those. One of the cooler abilities you can get later is, uh, instead of shooting one torpedo, you shoot three. Another enemy sundered by the void. The problem with that, though, is that the cooldowns on these special abilities, I don't have any yet at this stage of the game, but there's certain super powerful abilities you can get uh, from the posts, but 
the cooldown could be several battles. So if you use it, you just have to keep in mind, you know, you might be in a real tough battle right after that, and you won't be able to use any of those abilities. So I just save them until it's just desperate. <laughs> Am I still not able to... Until I'm absolutely desperate before I start using those superpowers. The ones I've been using here are not the, not the really good ones. Uh, some of them you can use multiple times in the battle. Uh, so close! So this is the side that's weakest. Oops. i got to get him a little closer, I think. A little bit closer. There we go. Yeah, see, his shield is almost gone, so I should be able to take him out there. He's dead and good riddance. Looks like I should be able to finish that guy off. Oh, come on. Oh, that stinks. Oh, I got him. Rest of my torpedoes could have got him, so now they're just going to be wasted. I'll take it. I think these guys are trying to get away. A worthy deed. Yeah, I guess they ran away. Uh, so there's your space combat. <clears throat> you know, it's not terrible. I swear, I think they've somehow it's faster than <laughs> just the, you know, when I was making a my first playthrough, it just seemed like it took forever. So maybe they've somehow fixed that. Even in maybe enough people complained about it, they sped it up some, but. You know, I would even like it to be faster than that. But, you know, that's I can deal with that. <laughs> when I was playing it, I mean, it was taking so long. I go get a cup of coffee, come back, the computer would still be taking its turn. I mean, it was pretty crazy. I think that's about all I can really show you here at this point. I mean, I don't want to spoil too much of it. I do like the... I guess I could show you these characters, but... The Tech Priest and the Navigator characters are two of my favorites. Just really useful to get the right abilities. In Adira, uh, she could even get, put, <coughs> get uh, Pyromancy. Just, <laughs> just amazing the stuff she can do. You really want those characters. Let's see. I can, there we go. I see you can see some of the different characters available. Yeah, here's the Navigator. Definitely want her in your party. She's got cool stuff too, like she can, lots of ways you can make her where she's basically untouchable. Dodge and not take any damage from attacks. Uh, and this Tech Priest is a really cool character too. He's got this sort of robot arm. And the cool thing about this is you can have two, you can be dual wielding and both of those will be two handed weapons. So like the power axe here and then the an arc rifle. And then one of the little tricks I figured out is if you replace this axe with a hammer, uh, then he can do the melee attack and they'll, they'll shove the enemies away and then they'll be out of range. Uh, and then you can use the arc rifle on them. Or, I don't know why he's got an arc rifle. <laughs> Plasma works much better. Uh, uh, so the tech priest, or at least this guy, you can give him lots of perks to uh, plasma and melta weapons or flame weapons and he Again, can do really good damage. You know, about the only problem with him is he's fragile. You know, I guess by the time you perk, you can, you're always going to perk up his intelligence because he gets lots of lots of great benefits from that. So you might neglect toughness as to be, be a bit of a glass cannon. Yeah, this thunder hammer. So you see that it says maces and hammers have a special attack that pushes enemies away. Uh, so that's actually really good because if you can knock them prone. Or knock them away, then you can use your ranged weapon uh, with no penalties. So I've done that a lot. And really, the plasma, let me see if I can find a plasma weapon here. You see how quickly your inventory fills up with. <laughs> like, do I want to throw this away? I don't know. It might be useful at some point. I don't even know if I have plasma at this point of the game. There's some flamer weapons. Nice thing about flame is you, if you set them on fire, then they just burn. Take damage over time. Oh, here's a plasma weapon. Yeah, so what I love about this is it's got an 8 range, even this pistol version. 
which is pretty decent and it's, it's like a square of damage and you can really spit that out long ways away so it's a really useful thing and he often goes first matter if do i have the art tech yet yeah well no that's wrong character yeah he's a grand strategist so he always goes first and so what i like about the plasma on him is you're pretty much guaranteed to be able to, if there's any kind of little grouping on the battlefield you'll definitely be able to hit him with this uh sorry <laughs> the plasma <laughs> Uh, and then again, if you take the perks that are available to him to buff this up, uh, you could really sometimes clear a whole section of enemies before anybody else even gets to move. So that's definitely worth looking into. And then Argenta here. Yeah, you got her. I don't have it yet here, but she can get these flamer weapons, these giant two handed flamer guns. And again, perk that up in various ways, and she can just annihilate. <laughs> You know, a lot of times you'll be up against an enemy and nothing else works. You know, all the other weapons will just do tiny bits of damage, but then she comes in with this flamer and just takes half their hit points away. Really useful thing to have. But anyway, I don't want to spoil everything for you. I mean, half the fun is just kind of experimenting, thinking about different strategies. And Well, I guess one thing I could show you here. You can see what the reputation system looks like. Uh, so this kind of took me a while to figure out, but instead of instead of selling items and getting cash and then using the cash to buy items, uh, you have to have profit factor. So you get this up either by doing quests or colonies. You do certain things in the colonies and you get your profit uh, factor up that way. By far and away, the best way to do it, though, is you explore a bunch of planets and then there's a robot on Footfall, and he will buy the data from you for all the planets you explored. So it's basically, uh, you make like 70 profit <laughs> with that. So I wouldn't even worry about profit factor. Uh, just keep exploring planets and going back to that Opticon robot, and you'll have plenty of cash. But it doesn't really do you any good unless you have reputation, because uh, you can see zero, one. So I have to have at least uh, zero. I think you have zero already, right? <laughs> I would have to have a level one reputation to buy this stuff. So you say, well, how do I do that? Let's see. Well, we can see what he wants to buy. Melee weapons are worth 100. Heretic trophies are worth 500. Xeno artifacts, etc. Uh, so you can see Xeno and heretic trophies. Let's see what these guys want. Heretic. I'm just kind of curious if they give you uh, different amounts, but it looks like it's always worth 500. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> yeah, this guy. You won't find that stuff for a while. Uh, Alright, so if we go to him again, let's see. Melee weapons. So since this is just kind of just kind of demonstrating this, I'll just put a bunch of this stuff in cargo. That's Mechanicus. It tells you on the bottom there what type of cargo it is. So he doesn't want that. Uh, he might. Yeah, he takes armor kits. So I have to put him in cargo. Again, I'm just putting everything in there to try to get up enough uh, points to show you what I'm talking about. Let's see, is that enough? Yeah, there we go. So I put all that. Uh, make sure I'm looking at the right guy. Yeah, so now i got some trading of a trade. Now you can see the stuff lights up. And you, you just buy everything. I don't know why you wouldn't just buy everything. It doesn't actually subtract from your profit factor. Uh, and even if you don't want it, you can always add it to cargo and, you know, maybe use it to trade with somebody else. But this is, a lot of this stuff is very useful. Like, you can imagine this Cloak of Retribution, 15% bonus to damage against enemies that dealt damage to the wearer. And you stick that on your tank, and that's pretty much, you know, guaranteed 15% bonus to damage. Because they're going to be hitting him. And there is kind of taunting mechanics. You know, there's ways you can... Uh, well, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I forgot. Sometimes when you're in ship combat, you get these uh, trophies uh, that you can sell to the Navy and get uh, ship components. So, but Anyway... 
As you can see, lots and lots of mechanics, lots of leveling. Uh, if you like, if you're like me, you're going to spend probably most of your time looking at the leveling screen and looking at all those talents, trying to figure out, hmm, is this better? Maybe uh, this talent with this item, with this ability, you know, maybe that would be a good combo. And there's lots of ways to uh, work as a team. You know, there's all those skills that are like, if you have a ally adjacent to you, you know, you get certain perks that way. Lots of really interesting gameplay dynamics. Uh, you know, and I'm probably not like a, not exactly Napoleon on the battlefield here, but, you know, I was able to figure out enough stuff so that by the end of the game, I was pretty much just dominating every battle. I mean, the final, the final boss, you know, is, is all this build up, like it's <laughs> going to be uh, this epic struggle, and I pretty much took him out with, I don't even think he got a single turn. I actually had killed him. Uh, just with the techniques I'd worked out, the synergies, with my crew. So, uh, I, I love that stuff. I mean, I, I like a game where if you study it, you get better at it, you experiment, you know, and you find ways to just really kick ass. You know, I miss that you know, because it seems like so many games these days they want to do the level scaling and item scaling and all this crap, where you basically never feel that sense of power. <laughs> you know, I don't want. Uh, just to get my butt kicked all the time and to struggle all the time. I, I want a big struggle at the beginning, you know, as I'm learning how to play. But, you know, once I get everything figured out and get the right gear, you know, it's time to switch over to... <laughs> you know, ah! uh, but anyway, I guess I should uh, wrap up with some summative thoughts here. Uh, the story and the lore are very rich, you know, especially if you are like me, new to the Warhammer 40k universe. You know, I was, I was really fascinated by it. Lots of, uh, kind of off-putting at first, but, you know, once you kind of work, figure out the terminology and what's going on, it uh, does grow on you. It's definitely different uh, than uh, the Pathfinder games or Baldur's Gate, you know, games of that sort. A lot of gray areas. It's almost, you know, it's almost like uh, tyranny, if you remember that one. Uh, not... I, I really didn't like that game. I thought they went overboard uh, in that game. This one kind of teeters. You know, I would like a little bit more, at least one of the paths to be more, uh, uh, shall we say, upright or more heroic. You know, I don't always want sort of tainted, uh, morally ambiguous sort of outcome, you know. Uh, but, you know, you got to give the... If that's what they intended to do, you know, to a certain extent, I respect that. Uh, graphics hold up well. Everything looks good, sounds good. The uh, animations are good. The They do rely very heavily on text. So some people don't mind that. I found myself struggling sometimes. Like, I, I really just wanted to click through some of the dialogues. Like, God, do I really want to read, you know, three paragraphs? You know, it's, it's not as bad as Torment Tides of a... Numenera in that regard, but again, it's kind of close. You know, I feel like they probably had about half the dialogue uh, and, you know, would have been better. Uh, maybe not quite half. <laughs> Let's say uh, if they'd cut, say, 20%, it uh, could have been tighter that way, and then rely more on cinematics and animations and things instead of having to spell out. Like, oh, this character is bowing. Uh, you know, you don't want to read two sentences about character bowing uh, when you could just they could do a quick animation to show you the character bowing. <laughs> show, don't tell. But uh, anyway, uh, I think probably far and away my favorite aspect, though, is the tactical turn-based combat. You know, it's really interesting, some of the battles, especially when you get up against the bosses. And it's not easy. You know, so you might have to reload a couple times. You're thinking about different ways you might approach the battle, uh, different positioning, different uh, abilities you might use. So it's, it's really kind of... Uh, rewards you, I suppose, if you like tactics, which <laughs> that's my sort of my thing. And so I really enjoyed that. Uh, matter of fact, I'd say this kind of reminds me of, uh, I was trying to think of all the games that it reminds me of. It's definitely an XCOM factor to this. So if you really like XCOM, if you watch this channel, I hope you do, because it's <laughs> one of my favorites. <laughs> and so if you like that style of combat, you know, you get some of that here. Uh, it's got a little bit of a, like I said, kind of a Dune vibe. In terms of atmosphere, of course, if you read the Warhammer 40k books, I think you would. Uh, I'm actually curious. So, if you are a Warhammer 40k fan and you play this, I'd like to know how well this represents the, uh, the world, 
Does it do a good job depicting that universe? I have no idea. <laughs> so love to hear from you on that. Uh, just from my experience, though, it was interesting. Let's see. So what, is there anything else? About the only negatives, uh, there are lots of glitches and bugs. It's kind of horrendous. You know, I've uh, there's a couple spots that it just crashes every time. No matter what you do, you have to reload, try to find workarounds. You can generally find stuff online where other people have had the same problem and they can give you some advice on how to get around a particular bug. But, you know, do you really want to spend this kind of money and have to deal with that? Uh, so that's kind of irritating. Uh, there's also some, again, so even some problems with, like, the uh, the leveling interface and you're trying to figure out what to, what to pick and you can't even trust the numbers that you see there on the screen. So that's a big negative. You know, I would, if I were uh, the developer, I would put, like, 100% of my focus on that. <laughs> you know, we've got to fix this. is vital. Um, I did crash the desktop many, many times. I mean, it just was, it got kind of infuriating. Uh, I did, I was able to save it most of the time and just reload, so I didn't lose much gameplay time. But, man, you know, if you're not in the habit of saving it frequently, you're going to suffer because <laughs> it will crash the desktop and then, you know, sometimes it crashes so bad you pretty much have to turn your computer back off and on uh, just to get it to continue on. Just bam! I don't know how much that's uh, this developer or Unity or some combination or maybe something on my end. I don't know, but I saw a lot of other people uh, complaining about it. So the game's good enough where I didn't just say, well, screw this. I quit. You know, it wasn't that bad, but certainly irritating. I hope they can fix that. I noticed that it really tended to happen most when I tried to uh, uh, exit out of the game. Maybe I wanted to look at uh, my internet browser, something like that, kind of minimize the window. Uh, anything like that would almost guaranteed cause it to crash. <laughs> so uh, don't do that. I'm in, I got such a habit of doing that, it was difficult to break. Uh, and then again, certain areas will just crash. Uh, sometimes you're in a battle, you know, just sort of a character or a monster. Just looks like, it looks like they get stuck. Maybe there's a missing animation or something. So they just won't move. You know, and it'll, it'll hang there, and it'll hang there. And just about the time you think it's stuck, <laughs> you know, then it'll proceed on. You can continue the battle. But I had a couple of moments like that. Uh, and then finally, sometimes, and this is kind of a minor thing, but you'd kill an enemy, and you'd come back, and instead of dying... Uh, the enemy would be there in a T pose. <laughs> and again, you can tell this is Unity, right? So they're, you know, the, the enemies are still hanging out, you know, in a T pose, and you're like, "What's that doing there?" <laughs> Can't click it. Uh, so little minor things like that. I wouldn't make too big a deal about that, but I do hope they fix those game crashing bugs because those are horrendous. Uh, but still, even with those caveats, I, uh, I think here. Long. I played it all the way through. Had a good time. I would, you know, it's one of those games where you're up all night, like one more turn, you know, one more battle. I just got this new ability, just got this new piece of equipment. I have to test it out, <laughs> you know. So it's got that vibe, uh, which I love. So uh, again, more good than bad. Uh, but if you want to wait for another patch to roll out, I think that might be advisable. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to stop it here. Uh, good game, Warhammer uh, 40k Rogue Trader. Uh, definitely pick it up. I recommend it, and I think you'll have a good time. And that's all for this week's episode. Uh, first Matt Chat of 2024. What do you know? And we've got through another year of Matt Chats. Uh, so hopefully you enjoyed all these, uh, all the Matt Chats from 2023. Uh, hoping for many, many more here in the new year. But there wouldn't be any of those videos without you and your very kind and generous patronage or as I like to say, retronage, keeping these episodes coming, keeping them in the production. Yes, keeping the pipeline flowing with gooey match hat goodness. And I couldn't do it, and I wouldn't do it without you. Now, maybe you've been on the sideline wondering if you want to support Match Hat. Are you really that crazy? <laughs> do you want to encourage this dude? The answer is, yeah. 
it's pretty groovy. <laughs> Just go, go to that link in the show notes to the Patreon page. Couple of minutes, couple of seconds if you're quick at the keyboard, and you can become an official match at Ratron. Join us on Discord, have great conversations. You'll never look back, and you will always <laughs> celebrate the day you became an official match at Ratron. So thanks to everybody that's already taken that step. What about that news, though, from the Matt Cave? All right, got a lot of great news here. Uh, a couple items, courtesy of Snap Snapper, the snappiest Ratron over on the Discord channel uh, for Matt Chat, Lair of the Rat King. Uh, let's see, he wrote in, wrote in about Heroes of Might and Magic 3, Horn of the Abyss. Now, this is an unofficial Might and Magic 3 expansion made by a mostly Russian crew with various other talented people. Lots of uh, features in this expansion. You get some new, lots of new stuff, a new town, uh, quality of life updates, terrain, all sorts of stuff. <laughs> lots of upgrades. Uh, I think they said they had some additions to the editor. Yes, updated editor. So this is really, really cool stuff. Now, I'll put a link in the uh, show notes to this, but it's called Horde of the Abyss. And if you're a Heroes of Might and Magic 3 fan, which I will assume you are, that you're smart enough to watch this channel, if your taste is that refined, need it be said that you are a fan of Heroes of Might and Magic 3. So go check out Horn of the Abyss. Let me know what you think. All right, and Snappy also wrote in about DOSBox staging. Now, this is pretty cool. You probably know about DOSBox because, well, once again, <laughs> you're a person of taste and refinement. Uh, DOSBox is a great emulator, but this uh, DOSBox staging adds quite a few really cool looking features. Proper CRT filter uh, that scales with your actual screen resolution. So, uh, you know, one of the problems I've run into a lot is with aspect ratios and all sorts of stuff or, you know, issues related to that display and graphics. Uh, so they really made a lot of improvements in that area, stretching and so on and so forth. <laughs> The horizontal and vertical stretch controls of CRT monitors in real time. Uh, they also have support. In some ways, I think this is even cooler. Uh, they've added support for the uh, IBM Music Feature Card. You know, I don't even know if I've heard of that before. IBM Music Feature Card. Uh, but they've also made it easier, they say, to deal with Roland MT32 ROMs. You know, so if you like those... Uh, oh, what is the games that... I know uh, there's some Origin games that really use the uh, Roland MT32. I want to say there's some Sierra titles that do as well. Uh, but anyway, uh, I've only seen that setup one time in my life with a full Roland, uh, real uh, MT32 setup, and that was just super impressive. So I'm really encouraged to see this. As I say they also have uh, numerous MIDI-related improvements. So uh, it seems like the CRT business is getting all the attention, but this audio stuff is pretty cool too. A lot of those games uh, probably sound better uh, than you might remember, you know, if you didn't have all this cool technology. And, and really, who had a Roland <laughs> back in the day? I certainly didn't. Uh, so that's exciting. I uh, see what I missed out on anyway. And then last but not least, Punny. Yes, Punny is back with some, other, with some new news, <coughs> this time about Daggerfall Unity. Now, I've talked about this off and on over the uh, <laughs> is <it> years, <laughs> uh, certainly uh, months, though. Uh, there's been an effort by one Gavin Clayton, who, by the way, I'd love to have on the show, uh, to bring uh, Daggerfall, the original classic. That's probably an undisputed classic. Kind of wacky. Uh, one of my favorite episodes of Matt Chat covered it. Uh, but anyway, he's been porting this, updating it, doing uh, uh, the legwork, I guess, necessary to make it in Unity. And so you get all the benefits of Unity, but the classic gameplay. So that is now <coughs> officially <laughs> released 1.00. Uh, open source recreation of Daggerfall on the Unity engine. And experience the adventure and intrigue of Daggerfall with all of its original charm, along with hundreds of fixes, quality of life enhancements, and extensive mod support. Uh, so again, really, really cool news. You know, I love it when uh, somebody takes the old classics and updates it, makes it relevant again, or I don't like that we're relevant again. Uh, what's a better way to put it? Uh, more accessible, I guess. <laughs> more accessible to the newer generations or... You know, people like me, maybe I don't want the exact, I mean, I don't really care about having the exact authentic experience of Daggerfall. You know, sure, I'd rather play something that's a little more updated uh, that's not going to uh, require so much uh, work getting it to run properly and so on and so forth. And, 
yeah, why not take advantage of the modern technology? And, you know, take that original game, but you know, make it uh, make it even better uh, than was possible back in the day. So, uh, thank you, Gavin. Again, love to have you on the show if you want to talk about Daggerfall. And I think uh, I read somewhere where Gavin is making an, an original game. So that'd be cool to talk about as well. All right, my voice is just about gone. <laughs> what a way to start the new year. I haven't even done any partying or anything like that, but it's just really cold and dry here <laughs> in St. <Saint> Cloud. <coughs> you know, there's actually a movie. Uh, I just watched it yesterday. It's called Catch Me If You Can. And it's actually set here in St. Cloud, Minnesota. <laughs> and it's not a very good movie, uh, but the soundtrack was done by Tangerine Dream, probably my favorite electronic band. You know, and I've heard the soundtrack a few times. I didn't know that, uh, that this movie was set in St. Cloud. Somehow it all lined up and I realized, oh my God, <laughs> there's a movie with a Tangerine Dream soundtrack that was set. You know, and I watched it and sure enough, you know, some a lot of that, uh, uh, a lot of it does, you know, could, could have been shot anywhere, but there's a few places that really are here in St. Cloud. It's really fun. Uh, so if you want to watch a terrible movie with a good soundtrack, uh, watch. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to recommend it because you'd hate me. <laughs> uh, but anyway, it was kind of interesting. What, what the hell was I talking about? Uh, anyway, let's wrap it up with a quote. Uh, and so I was looking for quotes about uh, Warhammer. You know, from there's a lot of uh, Warhammer novels, and I think I've mentioned a few times I'm a big fan of the Gotrick and Felix series. Uh, they come out in these giant omnibuses, omnibuy. <laughs> it's like three or four novels in this one massive volume. But I just I love that stuff. It's so well done. You know, a lot of people you might think, well, I don't care about Warhammer. Uh, you know, that might be a turnoff for some people, but you know, just trust me. Uh, give it a chance. I think you'll really be impressed. Uh, they kind of read to me like a mash up, but there's a little bit of Conan the Barbarian in there, a lot of uh, Lovecraftian elements in there. Uh, maybe some other elements, if I sat down and thought about it, but uh, maybe, you know, the Grey Mouser. Uh, is that right? Yeah, the Grey Mouser. A lot of great stuff. You know, so definitely check it out if you get the chance. But anyway, I found a quote uh, from the most recent one of those I read, and I thought I would share. Yeah, this kind of gives you a little flavor, too, I think, of what the series is like. Uh, so this is a quote from a character named Max. Uh, towards the end of the uh, first part of the fourth omnibus. <coughs> Can I get through the quote? <laughs> it goes something like this. Youth is a terrible time, as you may remember. A time when our strength and prowess often outstrip our ability to use them wisely. We may do a thing out of petulance or quick anger that we then regret for the rest of our lives. But, given a chance... Given the gift of forgiveness and a second chance by older, wiser heads, we may live long enough to learn from those mistakes and to make amends for them. So a little something to ponder on there. Hope you guys enjoyed that and see you next week.